He hates intros. Yeah. <laughs> That's the same thing I did now because we're already live, by the way. So this is episode 20 of Red Pill Reads. And I'm with Rob Says. If you don't know Rob, you suck. That's right. You guys should get out more and, and find out who I am. But yes, I'm Rob from Rob Says. You can find me at uh, www.robsays.net. Uh, that's where my YouTube is. That's uh, my blog. That's my flagship, as I call it, when I talk about it in other places. All my links to my social media, it's all there. You can find me there. So. And I will be posting that in the chat as well. Sweet. And we will be talking about the manipulated man. Mm. Now, there has been some discussion about red pill women. I believe there's a subreddit as well. But mm. if there was one red pill woman, it's Esther Filar. Yeah. You got that right. Yeah, she she uh, definitely took a, a shot at, at her own kind, and uh, she is none too uh, flattering for women as a whole, that's for sure. Oh, no, absolutely <laughs> not. But this was, she wrote it during, I believe, or just after the sexual revolution. Like, all these women rights things came up, and everybody was equal, and make love, not war. And then she came out with a book, which the cover says, Men have been trained and conditioned by women, not unlike the way Pavlov conditions his dogs into becoming their slaves. Now, that's yeah. a subtitle for you. You still there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. So you read it again yesterday, right? Because it's yes. been a while for me, but I really wanted to do this one. And she even starts out in the first chapter by calling men just slaves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I, when I first got this book, uh, it's like I was telling you a little bit right before we went on. Um, when I, when I first picked this one up, this one is one of probably three, this is one of three books that really had a major impact on me. This one was probably in some ways, this one had the most because it was kind of an aha moment for me. Mm -hmm. Um, just some of the stuff she she talks about that it's just like oh my god this this explains so much uh, some of the stuff I remember highlighting that that it's just like oh my god uh, she says could it be that strength intelligence and imagination are not prerequisites for power but merely qualifications for slavery. Could it be that the world is not being ruled by experts, but by beings who are not fit for anything else by women? That's that's how, where we know where she's going when she starts off with something like that. And she's not wrong, by the way. And oh, it's, no. not, it's not necessarily that the world is being ruled by women in general, which, well, gynocracy and things like that. It's either by beta males or by women in general. But like Aaron says... As well, we live in an idiocracy right now. Like people yeah. who are experts, um, have something to say, are being held down for their beliefs, for their capability of doing something, because all hell will break loose if you finally find out what you're really capable of. And that's a weird thing as well, because I've I've had talks with friends of mine. And they told me, flat, I've told this story a thousand times, but they keep getting back to it. Like the guy was afraid to tell his wife that she should stop being a bitch. At least that's my wording of it. And I told him, like, whose house are you living in? Well, I pay for it. But if I tell her to act normal, she lets me sleep on the couch. I'm like, who the hell paid for the bed? She's happy she can stay in your house. But he was so shocked. But the thing is, what can she do to you? She's got 50% less body strength than you. What are you afraid of? Exactly. The only, the only thing I can say to that argument, because I, I've, I know guys just like what you're talking about that have gone through the same thing, the whole happy wife, happy life. Uh, you know, I'm in the dog house. I got to check with the boss. All that nonsense that just, just makes me cringe. And... One thing I can say that, yeah, while she may not have the body strength, um, she's got, at least here in the U.S., she's got the legal system behind her. Mm -hmm. I do know, uh, I don't know how it is where you're at, but here 
if a man and a woman get into an argument and rather one of those two parties or a third party like a neighbor or someone calls the cops and they have to come out and investigate it, uh, number one, bare minimum, bare minimum, somebody's leaving the house for the night. They, they will not let you stay in the same house. And usually it's the guy who's got to leave the house. And a lot of times, not only if they get called out as someone leaving the house, somebody is going to jail. That's kind of how it is here, that not only is the guy going to usually be the one that's leaving, he's going to be leaving in handcuffs. Now, the charges may get dropped. They may not. Uh, it just kind of depends on if there's any physical evidence of violence, any, you know, marks, scratches, anything like that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of guys are afraid of their wives or their girlfriends, even though the girlfriend or wife is very small in physical stature and in size. But it's the fact that he's probably going to go to jail and now he gets to deal with the legal system. Um, I have a friend years ago that met a woman and oops, knocked her up. And she, she was a twat, just, just horrible. And he tolerated her nonsense and tolerated it and tolerated it and tolerated it. And after they'd, she'd had the kid, the, I guess that her behavior got even worse. And one day he was arguing with her in her, his car, her car, I forget whose car it was. doesn't matter. Well, he, he finally had enough, and he turned around, and he open-handed slapped her Ooh. to kind of get her to stop her hysterics, her behavior. Didn't hit her real hard, but he slapped her and told her to knock it off. Well, she threw a fit, called the cops. Cops show up. He didn't actually end up in handcuffs, but because... They did see a red mark on her face. They, they did, you know, because she said he hit me. And the problem was he did it in front of their kid. Their, their like, two-year-old kid actually saw this whole thing go down. He's in, he's in a booster seat, in a car seat, and, you know, he's crying because mom and dad are fighting. Well, my friend ended up not actually getting put in handcuffs, but they did actually cite him. They, he was issued a ticket that he had to go to court and the woman decided she did not want to press charges. Well, the court system didn't care anymore. At that point, once the cops had gotten involved, it was out of her hands. And so he ended up having to go to court and he had to, you know, he basically pled like no contest where he never admitted guilt, but it's basically admitting guilt without admitting guilt. Mm -hmm. And so he ended up having to do a whole bunch of like anger management classes. He had to pay a bunch of fines. There was a whole bunch of stuff. He was on probation for like five years. And yet this guy had never once, and I've known this guy well over 20 years now. And this guy never once like has ever hit anyone in anger. Never. And, and I'm, when he told me about this, I was kind of like, Number one, I was like, wow, you finally, you finally had enough. And number two, I'm thinking, wow, you are a, you have the patience of a saint because I'm not a violent person, but man, I had to slap the shit out of that woman a long time before <laughs> you did, you know, but he had, he had so much bullshit he had to go through, even though she actually did not testify. She, you know, they, they actually had to like bring her in and actually she tried to defend him. You know, she became kind of like a hostile witness for the state, you know, where, wow, you know, she's actually defending his behavior now. And because she was just doing it for attention, you know, mm -hmm. but because she called the cops, it's now out of her hands here. And just, he went through a bunch of hell for it. And I'm, and I can see why some guys, because either they've already been through it or they know someone who has. And that's where a lot of times I think, they they do the you know well I I I I don't want to piss off the boss because mm -hmm. all she has to do is make a phone call and your life can be complete hell because now you're sitting in jail you've got court dates you've got a record now all because some woman got angry. Oh, absolutely! I don't know. I've haven't heard stories about that where I'm from yet. Uh -huh. And I do not advocate violence. Absolutely no. not. 
what I was advocating was just verbally putting her in a place. You don't even have to yell. No. You don't have to turn up the volume. But they're even afraid of doing that. They're even afraid of telling her, like, hey, stop being a bitch. Yep. But even then, and I do know it's this bad in the States, that yeah. even if you do that, if she exaggerates the situation, you can get locked up. The only thing she has to do is tell a proper lie. And speaking about the manipulated man, I don't know if you can quote this, but uh, how did she mention that in the book again? Like, behind her tearing eyes, man should only know the manipulation that goes on inside her head. Oh, I'm trying to think where that's at because I know where you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. And that it's, I've got so many things highlighted. It's like, what don't I have highlighted? And, and I remember there being something about her, her tears. And, and I like what she said about it too. God, if I could find that. Women's faces, children as hostages. Just oh, cool that's that. Well. Yeah, well, the whole thing. I mean, the, the, the thing that I remember the most that, that made me angry, that made me the angriest about it, and I think a lot of guys are getting there, and I think this is kind of where, like, MGTOW showed up. Um, and not that I'm pro-MGTOW per se. I, I think they're, they're kind of taking it to a, an extreme when you go that route. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I can, that their, their premise, their, their point of, the game is rigged and the only way you can win is don't play that that part of it. I, I agree with them that mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I can see where, you know, Hey, there there's been times I thought about it, that it's like, man, if this is the bullshit I got to deal with, screw this. Hey, you can't Being, fire me. I quit. Exactly. And one of the things that, you know, that I thought about with it was, uh, cause she's brought it up here a couple of times. Where the hell is it? She, uh, one of the biggest things she said, and I think I wrote down the page number here. Well, there's that one. I'll, we'll get to that one in a minute because that one just made me laugh. But it's so true. Uh, where's it at? It's it's one of the biggest things that she came out. And, it, and it's what we're running into today. Where's it at? No, that's not it. No, that's... that's kind of the end that it's like, well, this isn't good. <laughs> well, because one of the things she mentioned, I'll, I'll just mention it since it's here. He goes, she goes on and says, as a result of love, man is able to hide his cowardly self-deception behind a smoke screen of sentiment. He is able to make himself believe that his senseless enslavement to woman and her hostages, the children, is more than an act of honor. It has a higher purpose. Which makes me think of trad cons because, yes. you know, got to get with God, you know, get, stay on the plantation, basically. Yes, because of the noble cause of sacrificing yourself. Right. Up to and including your own life. Yeah, they're, they're martyrs in their yes. own existence. Yes. The system forces her to be corrupt, but no one is going to worry about that. The more he tries to ingratiate himself for her, the more demanding she will become. The more he desires her, the less she finds him desirable. The more comforts he provides for her, the more indolent, stupid, and inhuman she will become. <laughs> and man will grow lonelier as a result. Hell, Ryan Stone's talked about this when he's mentioned his past marriage or relationship that he had where he was trying to be the ideal husband. Only Here's where it gets kind of depressing to me it is like literally the last paragraph of the book she goes only a woman can break the vicious circle of man's manipulation and exploitation but she will not do it there is absolutely no compelling reason why she should it is useless to appeal to her feelings for she is callous and knows no pity and, 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 you know, because my thoughts on this was, okay, this woman's laid out the groundwork of what's been going on for well over 50 years, mm -hmm. maybe even longer. I mean, when you get into the suffragettes and a bunch of other stuff, we're going back to even the 1800s here, that especially in uh, the United States, a lot of this stuff really hits home for here. And, and to me, it's like, okay, so... If a guy reads this 
and he can relate to it. He's probably going to get angry. He's probably going to get pissed off. He's probably even going to get a little down, like depressed, basically, because he's going to be like, fuck. Mm -hmm. But where do you go from here? You know, is is kind of what it comes down to. And, 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 and for me, I haven't totally figured that out for myself. I, you know, I mean, it's, it's one thing, you know, when guys talk about, you know, you need to have a mission. Okay. Mm -hmm. That I get, I get that. You got to have something going on. She cannot be your mission. And I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. 60 commandments of Poon. Yes. But at the same time, if, if the game is rigged, if relationships, if, if what this woman is talking about in the manipulated man, if this is how it pretty much is, then what's the point literally of dealing with women at all? You know, it, it is a, it is the, the war cry of MGTOW in a lot of ways. Cause it's like, why even bother dealing with them? If, if they are as dumb and, and as manipulative and they really are only here to try to extract resources for the most part, which can include hostages, the children that she'll use them against you at some point, potentially. Mm -hmm. If, if you have this world that is rigged against you and it's basically nothing but one big minefield. And all you're doing is trying to step on the smaller minds versus the big minds, but you're going to step on minds. What's the point of doing this? You know what I mean? As a oh, man, yeah. why, why bother? And, and if, if you're not going to have women in your life other than maybe as a whole to put your dick in, you know, you can hire a prostitute for that and, and save the drama, save the bullshit. Because mm -hmm. at least they're honest about why they're there. Yes, I am there to extract money from you. Okay, so you can have that and 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 reduce the the me too's and the uh, you know she comes back to blackmail you emotionally or financially or whatever it may be. But then what's the point? You know why why even bother living in a lot of ways if if women are the enemy so to speak which I don't think they are. No, but... no, 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 me neither, because that's what I got from the book, because yeah. Esther, Esther mentions very, very clearly that it is not women per se who did this. Oh, no, it's, it's men. We're, we're complicit in our own, our, own, or oh. our own enslavement. Yes, that too, but it's mainly that the state finally got its hands around female nature and exploited it to grow for itself which made women more dependable and stupid along the way mm -hmm. but that in the end all working for well of course the state has become a gynocracy and things like that because they are more controllable yeah. and men have their well as we just said their higher purpose in life they need to have a goal they have the burden of performance and still, for like 80, 99% of guys, it is women. So it's perfect. You have the perfect plan, actually. Yep. Like you've got one sex who's um, so easy to manipulate, to give them things. You give them their, their natural goal in life, which is resources. And you have the other one, which natural goal is the sex who wants the resources. It's perfect. Yeah. Oh, it's here's here's one that I found um, that this one was probably the biggest one to me because uh, I've, I've seen other guys. I, I There's other channels I subscribe to, not just on Twitter, but like on YouTube and other guys have hit on this. And I've seen this pop up in other places. And I think you're going to know where I'm going, but I want to read this. Uh, she says, this does not mean that American women are cruel. Women are never cruel to their men. Men are usually not important enough to be tortured. <laughs> Only in movies do women ruin their men intentionally. And that's in italics when she says intentionally. Mm -hmm. This simply means that American women, more than other women, fail to consider men as fellow human beings. Okay, and that... That to me is probably the biggest thing that I've noticed in the last, I mean, she wrote this in 71, yep. but uh, it's really become self-fulfilling or prophetic now. Uh, there was a guy, um, oh God, who was it? Cortez, I believe, Alexander Cortez a while back did a tweet 
that went fucking viral. I mean, it went worldwide where he was talking about, you know, a woman should, you know, a beautiful, if you want to be a beautiful woman, he had like 10 things. Yeah. Have right. long hair, be fit, mm -hmm. uh, you know, be kind, all these things. And then one of the last ones was love men and the outrage that women had that by God, that men actually should have standards <laughs> that we should have an opinion and and it, and it summed up right there that, that that we're not even in a lot of cases according to Esther and and I and I see it in my daily life just in little things that it, it, she's not this woman is not wrong when I think again it's not intentional but we as men are literally not even viewed as human beings we are a means to an end we are a machine whether it's the sexual machine, you, you know, one of our biggest things as guys is we want to be the playboy. We want to be the marathon guy that we, you know, we can get it up on command and have sex for hours and hours. Why? To please her. We, um, you know, if, if you are impotent or you premature ejaculate, you're less of a man because of it. And it's not necessarily that women say you're less of a man. It's other men or our fear that, oh, God, he's going to view me as less than virile. And, you know, so it's all about her pleasure, her her kids. It's what we can do for her. But, never, you know, you you don't even have, you know, you don't have standards. You're you're just the plow horse. I mean, that that to me is the this whole book is stay on the plantation or get back on the plantation. And, and lately on Twitter, especially in our, you know, part of the Twitter verse, you, you see the divide where it's, you know, the, the red pill guys versus the get back on the plantation guys, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, okay, so one group's offering observations and what we're calling objective truths that, you know, it's neither good nor bad, but here's how it is. And that's kind of how this book is, is here's something that, yeah, it's colored by her opinion of women. She doesn't think very highly of her own kind, nope. but she's not necessarily wrong. There are some truths in this. And one of them being that literally, and it's, it's, just the way that women are raised, you know, women have that entitlement that they, to give an example, um, with my job, two things that I, I've noticed a lot, and I've even confirmed it like with high management, just out of curiosity, but I had to, I had to word the question very carefully because then, you know, I don't want them to know where I'm going with this. But one of the first things I noticed, what I do I used to work in an industry that was critical to a business's, uh, the daily running of a business. I used to be in the armored car industry, okay? So I delivered money to banks, to commercial endeavors. And if they didn't get their money, they couldn't buy stuff. They couldn't pay their payroll. Uh, they couldn't pay for their overhead. They couldn't pay the, the lease or the rent. And so us showing up was critical. Getting their money, getting their cash was critical. Okay, so when I showed up in the armored car, everything stopped for us. You know, whatever they were doing, they, they finished it up, they put it on hold, and they dealt with us because it was critical. If we didn't show up, they were freaking out, and rightfully so. Ma big managers, CEOs, uh, down to the, the, the grunt, you know, the, the frontline guy, everyone was freaking out if we didn't show up. The job I do now is not critical. The, 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 the service we provide, it's nice and, and it's beneficial, but if we don't show up on time or, oh, things happen, you know, a truck breaks down. And so guess what? We're not going to get there till tomorrow. Their business is going to run just fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is every time I walk in the door and I've asked management about this, Anytime they get a phone call and someone's complaining because where are you, where's your guy at because he's supposed to be here by now or, oh, he missed this bin is their claim, uh, which is usually not true. It's always the women. <laughs> the guys don't give a shit. We are not critical. So the guys aren't complaining going, oh, God, you're finally you're here. Thank God. 
We've been waiting for you. No, it's the women. And, and what we're offering, it's a, it's a good service. It's a valid service, but it's not critical to the operation of their business. So why are you getting your panties in a twist? It's because women worry about shit that, that isn't critical. They're worried about, you know, uh, like I said, the, the, the pick, us picking up their, their the stuff that needs to be destroyed. Guys are worried about the power staying on. Guys are worried about the water staying on, you know, that, hey, we have plumbing so we can use the bathroom. We're worried about the heat being on in the winter and the AC being on in the summer. The critical stuff, otherwise business isn't going to run. We're worried about making sure we have enough cash flow. Mm -hmm. The women are worried about, well, did you pick up the recyclables? Oh, yeah. Who fucking cares? If it gets picked up today, great. If, it, if we have to do it tomorrow, it, it'll get done in the next, you know, it'll get done. But it's not critical to the operation of your business but it's the women that freak out or they're excited when i show up they're like, oh my god i'm so glad you're here and it's like oh that means your bins are full yeah probably you know? and it's never oh it is it is every time it's oh my god we're so glad you're here oh that means you got full bins and it's because they were being lazy bitches and didn't want to get up and walk it to a different bin that was an extra 40 feet down the down the hall so they packed this one bin completely full and the other ones are pretty much empty, but they're being lazy. And it's just like, wow, you guys worry about shit that doesn't matter. You know, and, and it, 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 to me, it's like Esther talks about. Women have the choice of not only to work or not, and, and maybe that's not as, as common today. Maybe it is more that women, to a degree, with all kinds of economic decisions and whatnot, you know, it is kind of, you do need multiple incomes in order to make a living in today's modern world. Yeah, that's... Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, no, uh, please finish your point, but that's the one thing I wanted to get to before we went live. So please finish your point and then we'll get into that. Okay, okay. Well, you know, she, and this is where it's a little dated, talks about, you know, women could choose to work or not work, you know, but the man has no choice, which is still true. The man has no choice in the matter because that's how society, that's how women have defined masculinity is your, your worth is your, is, is your work. You know, can you provide, can you make the money? A guy who doesn't work is, is a persona non grata. Uh, he doesn't exist. He is the loser. He is the outcast. And, and while women may in some cases have to work now to make ends meet, and of course, you know, by, by any means, women are encouraged to work now compared to maybe the days of yore, women still have the choice of occupations. Uh, I don't see a lot of women climbing power poles. I don't see a lot of women doing the work I do, working with heavy machinery with uh, vehicles that weigh 40,000 pounds and have shredders and claws on them that will tear your arm right off in the, in the blink of an eye. In fact, in all the years I've done what I'm doing right now, there's only been one woman who's worked on the front line and she quit three days later because fuck, that's hard work. Three days? Really? Three days. You know, and, and we, we, we do not discriminate based on sex, you know, based on gender. Because when I first hired on, there were no women doing what I do. And I just was like, huh, you know, in the locker room, it's all guys. It's like, I wonder what would happen if they ever hired a woman. Because I'm pretty sure she's not going to want to change into her uniform in front of a bunch of dudes. Mm -hmm. Well, they finally hired a woman. This woman, oh, yeah, I used to work in the jail. You know, I, I've been a, a correctional officer. So, yeah, I've worked with guys. You know, I can do this work. And I'm thinking, okay, where are they going to put her to change her clothes? Well, they moved a locker into the women's restroom, and so she has her privacy. Okay, fine. So that resolved that question that was in my head of, well, where are they going to put a woman if she decides to work here? And, and I did ask management at one point, like, hey, are you guys actually going to – if a woman ever wanted to do what we do, would you hire them? And they're like, absolutely. You know, we can't discriminate. So they hired this woman. Three days later, she's gone. Big surprise. <laughs> and, oh, but, you know, I, you know, I, hey, equality, ladies. You know, you, you know, I don't need no man fish bicycle, as Aaron would say. And, you know, I can do whatever a man can do. Okay, well, come do what I do. 
you know, my job's always hiring. We're always looking for people. So, I, but there's not a line of women lining up to do what I do. No, because it, it never has been about equality. No, it, it's it really, supremacy. Yeah, I know. I mean, the feminist <laughs> lie is uh, it's the undertitle about that one, right? Yeah. Yes, but, it is. I know it's from DDJ and uh, there's kind yeah. of between people, but I really loved his book. I absolutely love that thing, especially how he calls out all the big chiefs in the feminist movement. But mm -hmm. um, with the whole women ha had to choice to work, like this is the situation in Europe right now. And I told, I told this story on Red Evening yesterday where I'd love to have children. I'd love to. Really, first you have to find a woman who I think is capable of being the mother of my child. That's a first. But second, then comes the economics. Because in Europe, you are forced to have a double income or a six-figure income if you're a single-income uh, household. Wow. And even then, even then, you are forced to put your children through that indoctrination hellhole that's called the school system. And even after that, you have to put them in daycare because both parents have to work. So what's the use of having children if, one, you can't find a woman who has a notch count under 10, two, you can't homeschool them, three, you can't welcome them home. Wow. Like you can't spend time with them unless you have either two incomes together that make six figures or one six figure income. Wow. That see, I didn't know that, uh, not just the six figure income that, that blows my mind right there. Uh, yay. Did you know, uh, democratic socialism. Yay. Cause uh, that, here we go. And uh, maybe uh, maybe one, I'm exaggerating a bit, but yeah. if you want to raise them yourself yeah. with a single income, and don't want to put them in daycare, then yes, it's mandatory. No, I, I get that. The, the, one, the one thing you said that blows me away that I did not know, but why would I know, but is you can't homeschool them. Here at least, yeah, we can, you know, and if I was going to have kids at this point, if I, like you, if I could meet a woman that actually would be, you know, okay, she would be a good mother. Uh, you, you, like you said, the notch count under 10, that kind of thing. Uh, that would be, that would be how it would be in my house. It's like, oh no, we're not putting these kids through the brainwashing. No, we're homeschooling them. You know, rather I do it, you do it. Somebody's doing it, but they are not going into public education because they're just going to end up fucked up. Mm -hmm. And so that, wow, that you don't even have that option. Jeez. No, it, or what was it? Because I looked for it. It can be an option but and here comes the but so it's probably impossible you have to get a permit and things like that well no. see to get the permit they'll never give it to you anyway it's just it's bureaucracy all over yeah. but yeah. we have these uh what are these schools called again montessori you know what i you know what yes that is? yes things like that we do have that where i'm okay. from but what has been noticed is that the children who come from there uh, don't get along well in our normal high school education, which isn't that strange because one is where children can go free and learn at their own pace. And the other one is just a concentration camp. Right. I'm AOCing oh, wow. this one. <laughs> yeah. We have literal concentration camps. <laughs> well, we have them here too. There's, there's no doubt of that. It's, 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 pretty much the exact same thing of what you guys have got the i guess the difference is here with the homeschooling i mean there's certain state requirements that have to be met but what that comes down to i mean it, there's no permit it's just okay here's what the state says that there's this minimal amount that has to be done and basically your kids are going to be tested just like they are in public school and they have to pass it in order to, you know, be considered that, okay, yeah, you've, you've met the fundamentals, which like I said, is not terribly hard, but, um, the, the kids that I've met, my, my ex girlfriend is actually one of them. She was homeschooled and yeah, there's certain things that, you know, her parents didn't necessarily deem as important, 
Uh, she still didn't know shit about finance because dad just <laughs> took care of everything, you know? And so finance wasn't a big subject for her. And, and that I, I, I found was unfortunate there. It's like, oh yeah, my, my children would be learning about finance. But um, at the same time, she didn't have her head pumped full of a bunch of useless trivia, you know, like dates of a war and who signed this treaty and tell us about the Magna Carta. You know, it's like, yeah, it's bullshit. You're not going to need down the road. So who cares? You know, she did learn a lot of things that uh, were necessary that her parents did instill in her. And, and she actually, you know, her, her family was very traditional in their background. So she did learn a lot of the skills that a lot of young women today don't have. She knew, she knew how to sew. She knows how to cook. Uh, she, her parents were setting her up to be in a lot of ways, the ideal housewife. Uh, that's just kind of how she was raised. But then they did allow her to go to high school, like her last couple of years. And that's when the indoctrination kind of kicked in and she drank some of the Kool-Aid and kind of became a wild animal after that, even with only like a couple years exposure to it. Mm -hmm. And plus she was rebelling against religion. Her, her parents were very religious. And so she had to do the rebellious thing and yeah. And, and, and so she was, you know, we're all, we're all infected by feminism to one degree or another because it is, for the most part, especially in the Western, in Western countries, like where you're at, where I'm at, it's everywhere in those areas. So you cannot avoid it unless maybe there are certain areas, maybe further East, Eastern Bloc countries possibly. But I've talked to guys that live there, whether they're from there or they've uh, expatriated to there, you know, they're nomadic and they've moved there. Uh, it, it, they're even seeing feminism showing up, you know, the tendrils of it are there. And so I, I don't think you can fully escape it. And, and that, and that's a, a good thing, you know, or I wouldn't say it's a good thing, but it's, it's a good thing to keep in mind that you can't, you can run, but you can't hide from it. And if that's the case, where do you go? What do you do? And in my own opinion, kind of, you know, leapfrogging off of this book, you have to carve it out in your own community, wherever it is that you live. And if that means, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to find like-minded people that hold similar values that I do. So like finding a, a, a group of real life, not online, but offline, quote unquote, red pilled men, <laughs> then that's what you got to do. Um, I mean, that's kind of what me and TJ and Vince are doing with masculine geek. You know, I, I planned, we're all going to have a physical get together here in a couple of months. And I'm slowly coaxing and encouraging those guys move out of your, your leftist socialist hell holes. And, you know, not that where I live is the Mecca of conservatism and, and that there's no feminism here. Oh no, like I said, you can't escape it, but here it's a lot more conservative. Uh, men actually have a little more power. Uh, the family courts here are not as, uh, left leaning. They're not as slanted to the women that men, there is actually a little more of what I would call true equality here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's kind of a, in a way, a last bastion of, I wouldn't say masculinity per se, but men are still considered human beings here. They are considered a, not just a resource to be exploited, a workhorse, a plow horse, even though there's a lot of that. But men here are considered human beings for the most part. Um, the, 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 the feminism, the women that have been infected by it here, the, the majority of them that are really bad, they're not from here. They're transplants. They've moved from one state and now have tried to start the infection up here. And it's fun when there's a protest because, you know, President Trump said or <laughs> this group said, the protests here, they they don't get the momentum they do in other states. Like we've got Antifa here. I, I've seen some of the ninja guys. Really? But, oh yeah. But the funny thing about them, they're all live action role players here. They're LARPers because <laughs> if they ever went out in the streets and picked up, you know, a crowbar or a brick or something, and really wanted to raise hell like they've done in other cities, um, 
Utah is a very conservative state. It is a very pro-gun state, a very concealed carry state. And a lot of people here do carry firearms uh, because they can. And so between the cops taking no shit from them and the citizenry in general taking no shit, Antifa decided to get up in arms here and start lobbing rocks at people. They'd end up getting shot is what would happen. <laughs> That that rebellion, that that ruckus would be put down pretty fast. Yeah, that's always my thing with Antifa. Like, I don't know if they're very brave or either very, very stupid, because most Trump supporters who would go out in a rally are not your everyday American. Those are ex-Navy SEAL guys. Yes. Those are ex-military guys. Those guys do combat sports, physical combat sports. They have guns. And right. you think you can handle that in your black unitard and facial mask. Go ahead and try. Well, the, the, the reason I think it's more, I think it's a little bit of both that it, they are brave and stupid. Um, the areas where they've been able to pull it off and kind of get away with it, even with um, some of the, 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 the group you just described, a lot of it comes down to when, when you see some of those riots and whatnot get out of hand and people get seriously injured, everybody's going, well, where were the cops? Mm -hmm. and, and, and the cops were taking a back seat. And, and I'm not trying to get tinfoil hat conspiratorial here, but I think someone up higher in that area, that jurisdiction, whether it was the mayor or the, the, the chief of police or the sheriff or whoever, somebody told their guys to stand down. Oh, but that's true. That has already been proven. Right. And that's why, you know, but like in Utah, we have certain, we have certain laws behind the common citizen where the use of lethal force is a lot more acceptable, I guess, than in other states. Other states, it, it's a lot more restrictive to use lethal force. Uh, Utah is a lot more sympathetic to defending your property, defending yourself. And so, and here, you know, the cops would not be told to, to back off and stand down if, if guys are picking up crowbars and, and, and bricks to throw. Cops would be told, "Oh, they're use those guys are using lethal force. Do what you do. What must be done." And so, if the cops didn't clean up the mess, the citizenry would, because it would be the same thing. It's like, "Oh, that guy's got a crowbar and he's tar starting to take swings at people. That's lethal force. This guy could kill a guy with a crowbar. This guy could kill a guy with a rock." Mm -hmm. uh, the citizenry, the general citizens, would would not take too kindly to that. And, and these guys know that, and that's why it's more LARPing at this point. And they're more behind the scenes, kind of in the background, because they want to come out and start fucking around. Somebody's going to end up in the morgue. You know, oh, yeah. you know they're not just going to go to jail. They're, they're going to end up dead. And, and so that's why we don't have a lot of their presence here. Like I said, I know they're here. I've seen pictures of them here and there. I've, I've encountered them once in a blue moon a guy here and there and they've got their red flag and shit and it's like oh you're you're one of them okay <laughs> but they all kind of know most of the utahns you know it's 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 a it's a it's a toss-up who's packing and who isn't you know they don't know and and we the the ones who do carry consider well i'm carrying and i'm just joe blow nobody so that means everybody's carrying so everybody plays kind of nice in that sense because you don't know who's carrying and who's not. And if you find the right guy, you're pretty much fucked. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, there's and, – and we have plenty of those guys that I'm your Huckleberry. You know, they've been training for it for years. You know, they're, they're, they're like, oh, they showed up. Goody. I have an <laughs> excuse, you know. And so they get to put their training into practice. They get to see, well, let's see how, how all that training I've done over the years, how that works out now that we're here for real. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've been waiting for that day. We've got guys like that, that, oh, they're, they're all excited. They're all, oh, you know, oh, goody. And, it, it reminds me of that, what's his name again? Based stick man. Yeah. You know him? I know of him. Yeah. Oh, that dude was ready. <laughs> Yeah, he was ready. Exactly. Yeah, he 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 came down looking for a fight, and he got his wish. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But the thing with Antifa, uh, when they do hit somebody, I always noticed it's either like those, these, these pudgy guys or old men. Yep. It's never one of the bigger guys who got hurt. No, it's always the elderly men or some pudgy young kid. Oh yeah, That's they 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 remind me of a pack of hyenas. They don't go and take down the strongest bull in the herd. They they pick on the elderly or the weak or the sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly it, like that. And yeah. we have Antifa here as well, but it's it's not as bad as with you. Well, and 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 it's only in certain areas here. Like I said, you know, when I see stuff on the news, I, the first thing I think besides oh, it's pajama boys, yay. Is I, I sit there and I go, okay, where's this going down at? You know, where where's this this incident happening? Oh, it's in Portland. Oh, well, that's a leftist shithole. Okay, that makes sense. That the, the left owns that. That's their that's one of their base camps. So that's business as usual there. So yeah, of course the cops have no power there. Uh, everybody's liberal there. Everybody's on the left. Everybody you know hates Whitey, and so of course they have a presence there. That's they are them and the cops actually kind of go hand in hand there. They're both on the same team, really. And so it's like, oh, okay, that explains that one. You know, and the people that got hurt, yeah, it was the old man or it was the chubby guy or whatever, the fat dude that couldn't do anything because they are a bunch of weak weaklings. But duh, but it doesn't happen too often in Texas. It doesn't happen in Utah. It doesn't happen in Montana. It doesn't happen in Wyoming. Um I don't know about Denver. It's because Denver's kind of turning into a shithole. But, you know, there's a, there's certain areas where you hear about it, but these are strongholds that, that they control the turf. And so there's minimal consequences to their actions besides a lot of gnashing of teeth and clutching of pearls. But you get into more of the conservative areas. Yeah, that shit doesn't happen because the citizenry, the, the, the parents are looking at their kids going, oh, you, you, you wear a ninja mask. No, you don't. No, you're taking that off. You ain't going out and doing that shit. You know, dad's going, D son, I didn't raise you to be that way. I will kick your ass right now. You know, it's, you go out there and you want to act the fool. You do remember our next door neighbor is a Navy SEAL. You've seen his arsenal. He will kill you if you put on that ninja mask because he's not going to know who you are. And he's been trained to do it. He's an assassin. That's what the government trained him to do. Mm -hmm. he will break your neck and slit your throat and you'll be dead before you even hit the ground. Do you really want to go and fuck around? And the kids, you know, they're not totally stupid. Not, not in these areas that they go, yeah, they, they, we're, we're playing for keeps here. You know, this, this is real. They might get online and talk shit, but they, when it comes to, when they walk out their door, they, they have a whole nother persona going on. Mm, they you know? realize that they're not that, big of men yeah they 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 know they know to stay in their own lane you know <laughs> they, they really do they they don't get too lippy here because yeah here there's real life consequences if you want to run your mouth on the street oh yeah but they, like the, the lefties there are so emotional like a while back and this is a real while back like six months ago there was this rally and you had a kid in a maga hat hat who just smirked at a guy and it made the national news. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. I, yeah. He only smirked. Like, what is wrong with you Yanks? Why yeah. is this a problem? But you see, that's but that was again that I, I don't remember exactly where that happened, but it was a it was a left stronghold. Mm -hmm. It was an area that the that was, you know, the 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 left, the the liberal party, the the Democratic Party, all that. That was one of their strongholds that this happened in. And and yeah, it's stupid. It shouldn't have happened. All this kid did was smirked. But I also look at that and go, well, you were in occupied territory. <laughs> and so wearing a MAGA hat there, it had its own consequences because these people knew nobody would do anything about it. And so they made a fuss. The kid wearing a MAGA hat here, nobody would say anything. It's it's like, oh, you're you're one of, you know, 30,000 guys here wearing a MAGA hat. You're, you're, you're part of the, the standard crew here. You know, that's just kind of how it rolls. You know, Utah itself is a Republican state. 
Mm -hmm. You know, not that I'm necessarily Republican. I'm more independent, I guess, more libertarian in my views when it comes to politics. But the state as a whole votes Republican and always has. And as far as I can tell for the foreseeable future, probably always will. And so, you know, they don't need the presidential debates to come here or whatever because Utah's a lock. They know the Republicans know we've got Utah. And so they don't even bother showing up here. Why, why bother? And same with the Democrats. They don't bother coming in because they know they're not going to win the, the, the vote here. Mm-hmm. You know, not as a whole. There, there's not enough people here that vote left. And so the MAGA hat incident would have never happened here. If anything, if, if someone would have knocked the MAGA hat off the kid, there would have been 20 other MAGA hats going, why are you bothering him, bud? You know, <laughs> what, 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 why are you knocking his hat off? What's your problem? You know, it would have been a whole reversal in a way. It would have been the kid saying, you know, make pussy great again or something, you know, some pink pussy hat where Mm -hmm. that would have gotten their hat knocked off and they'd have been smirking and everyone would have been standing on them going, really? Go go, go to work. Go back to work. Yeah, but that's the thing because like the guy with the MAGA hat in that left his shithole, he was just yelled at and screamed at and threatened. But when it's the other way around, I imagine the guy's in the MAGA hats who knock the pussy out off would just go like, yeah, go, go to work kid. Oh, that, yeah. And that's all it would be. If, if there would have been any, any action that people would have been like, wow, that escalated quickly. It would have been, and I've seen it happen here. Here's a true story. Uh, there was a protest here a while back and, and I don't remember what it was even about because hell I was at work. I had things to do. But I remember driving by the protest and the protesters in other states, they had like, you know, 50,000 people turn out and and it was all, you know, it turned into a mob rule, chaotic thing, cars burned, all that kind of stuff. Here, there was like 15 people and most of them were um, unemployed. And, and, and the only thing I ever heard from the opposition as far as the anti-protesters who didn't bother to even show up, they just did it from their cars as they drove by, was get a job, go back to fucking work. You know, that was all that was ever said as they drove by, you know, go, go, go to work, get a job, get a life, you know, and, and that was the opposition to these protesters. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's and even I'm thinking is that I'm driving by. It's like, wow, how would it be to not have a job that you could go stand around and protest shit that you have no control over and it doesn't matter anyway? You know, it's like, wow, get a life, guys. You know, go out and get laid. Girls, shave your armpits and be more attractive, and you might get laid. You know. Oh my God, Rob, did you just tell a woman how to look to become attractive? Oh yeah, I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn your channel down here. I keep going. I better oh, watch my mouth. God, I'm gonna I'm get burn me. my own channel down. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we're going out in a bang. That's right. Go down it. Go down. Better, better to burn out than fade away. Yeah, we're gonna build our own YouTube with blackjack and hookers and women who Ooh. shave their armpits. Yeah, and, and yeah, shave their armpits, shave their legs. Oh yes, especially that. Oh yeah. Oh, d- dude, my my ex wife. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> this is gonna yeah. be funny. Well, I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give your audience and anyone that decides you know that wants to come over and check my shit out too. Uh, I'm gonna give a little background to me about you know kind of I guess where did I come from? How did I get here? Who's this guy that's running his mouth and kind of looks like Ted Nugent? You know, who who the fuck is this guy that Jack's talking to? So let me let me give your audience a little background because even my audience doesn't know my full background, but I'm going to give you a little more. So I got married in 2000, uh, 2009. I met my ex-wife in 2007. Now, back in the early aughts and even the late 90s, um, I was very blue-pilled. Uh, just drank a lot of the Kool-Aid, b- bought into the whole egalitarian thing. Um, uh, I was that guy that, you know, happy wife, happy life. It, you know, uh, I put women's needs before my own. Uh, you name it, I did it all in the name of trying to get pussy. You know, you need to be, you know, you need to communicate. I, whatever tropes that we make fun of or roll our eyes at today, dude, I was guilty of probably all of them. Weren't we all? Exactly. But that was me. And, and here's something for your guys out there that are watching this. If they want to take anything of value today, any, any point, any lesson home today, 
I got one for you guys. And, and this is going to probably cause a little bit of furor on your site. And, but it is this mm -hmm. guys, if you're not attracted to them, do not date or fuck fat women. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay. I, I, when I was young, so we're going back to high school and, and into college. I've always been into thin, attractive women. That's just how I'm wired. I, I like them thin. I like them fit. But I drank enough Kool-Aid. I got enough programming. And as I got a little bit older and I started doing all the beta moves, doing beta game and just doing the bullshit, I was surrounded by women, but I wasn't banging any of them. And it really will take a hit on your self-esteem because you start thinking it is you, you know, maybe it's me. And in a lot of ways it is because it's your behaviors. It's the things you're doing that aren't working, but you've been told these are the things that work. And so you start thinking you're crazy. And then when you start questioning it, you get called, you know, a, a misogynist, a sexist. You get called that you're a pig because all you think about is sex, all that kind of shit. Had it all happen to me. Well, as I got into uh, the late 90s, early 2000s, basically I started going after low hanging fruit. And that was these women that were overweight. We're not talking morbidly obese here, but they were definitely overweight. Pudgy. Well, that's being nice. You're being generous. We'll just say they were fat. <laughs> they weren't necessarily morbidly obese, but they were fat. Okay. And it was also the whole, you know, it's not what's on the outside. It's what's on the inside. You know, fat girls need love too. all that talk. Well, they get enough love from food as it is. Exactly. But back then, th again, this is the Kool-Aid talking here. Back then, so, the food wasn't as dense. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so I, I ended up, you know, dating a bunch of fat girls. And, you know, it, it wouldn't go very far because I, I knew deep down what I liked. I knew what I wanted. But, you know, I didn't want to be seen as, you know, that bastard of a guy. And that's kind of, you know, with each fat girl that I was dating, fucking, whatever it was, it would just take that much of a toll on my own self-esteem till I got to a point where it became kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy where the only women I could get was these overweight women. And that's where enter 2007, I met my, what was to be my wife who ultimately became my ex-wife. Uh, and it was this downward spiral that, well, maybe this is all I am worth is these type of women. And guys, do not, for the love of God, don't do it. You know, it, I mean, if you have that fetish and you're one of those guys, which they do exist, I, I've met a few of them, that you have that fetish for big women. Okay, you know, hey, they need love too. And if that turns you on and that is your thing, then you do you, man. You do you. But if it's not your thing, don't do it. Just, just don't. Don't go there. I don't care how uh, horny you get. I don't care how lonely you get. Guys, your, your self-esteem, your, your self-worth will take a huge hit. And, and it's, it's like taking drugs in a way. It's once you start, you go, it, it's, a, it's a downward spiral and it, and it hits quick. It, it, it's not a gradual decline. It is... It starts gradual and then you drop off a, a vertical cliff with it. That's oh, been yeah. my experience. Absolutely. And a friend of mine used to state that he'd rather die than settle for less. And those are words I keep remembering to this day because his his girlfriend broke up with him, and him or something like that. And he had one night. But she really was a beautiful woman. Really. This was a beautiful girl. She won pageants and things like that. And she broke up with him. And the first thing he said was, I'd rather die than settle for less. And that became his standard. And then he went off to college. And, well, I don't know how many he had, but he kept the standard. He yeah. never went for fat chicks or whatever. He just tried harder. Yep. And I, and I would agree with you on that. Uh, and, and I think that's a great motto, a great adage, an axiom, a uh, personal rule, whatever you want to call it. Uh, because that's where I got uh, towards the end of my marriage was things were so bad. 
I mean, the, the one thing that was different compared to a lot of dead bedroom stuff that I see and hear and read about most of the, the dead bedroom stuff, you know, the guy's not getting sex. He wants it, but he's not getting it or he's getting it once or twice a year. The only thing that was different from my story compared to most guys I've ever read about or heard about was I was the one who didn't want the sex. She did. But to me, it was like, man, if I never have sex with this woman again, I'm good because that's that's how much I was turned off by my ex-wife. But all the other shit, you know, I'm the one that's working. She chose not to work. So she's laying around spending the money. We're going deep into debt. She's not taking care of the house. She's not doing anything. She's... She's this entitled woman that we're reading and hearing about in The Manipulated Man and in other parts of the, the stuff that you and I have delved ourselves into. And, you know, what have you done for me lately kind of shit. And I just finally was like, man, I would rather be dead than live another day doing this. And I started actually contemplating suicide. Isn't that the video you made as well? I killed a man. Yep, that is. That was that's what that's all about. Where I yeah, my confessional mm -hmm. is 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 I got to a point that when I decided I would rather be dead, physically dead, that if this is the rest of my life, if my job is to fuck a woman that I don't want to fuck and and to provide for her and to take care of her, her every need, wish, whim, desire, and want. And my shit doesn't count. Nothing matters. What I say and do, nothing matters other than she's humoring me or placating me. But otherwise, what is the fucking point with living? And when I got to that point, you know, I literally was looking down the barrel of a gun. And it's like, man, I'm actually, death would be a welcome release is where I was at. And that's when it was like, okay, something's got to give here. Either I need to eat the bullet and let's be done and move on with that. At least all my problems will be over. Or I need to figure something out. And it was around that time that I happened to stumble across the rational mail and realized I wasn't crazy, that I wasn't delusional, that holy shit. And that's when, that's when I murdered the old me. That's when I actually killed the old me. And when I told her I wanted out and I was done, and of course, you know, she does her fit, does her thing. And it was rough for a bit, but I had told my ex-wife, just like I said in, in that confessional, that video, my blog post about it as well. But I had said to her, don't consider this a divorce, consider it a funeral. The guy you fell in love with, the guy that fell in love with you, he is dead. This isn't a divorce. You're burying him because he died. The man that stands before you looks just like him. And that guy cares about you in a general sense that he doesn't want to see you. You know, he doesn't wish you any harm, but that guy wants nothing to do with you and, and is not in love with you and never will be, you know, that this guy looks just like him, but this is another guy. And that's where, you know, hello, you're talking to him, you know, because that old me, he is, he's dead. And, Guys, there's more to life than women. You don't need to settle for anything. You're more than a workhorse. You don't have to stay on the plantation, but you do need to figure out if you don't want to be on the plantation, you need to figure out what you do want to do. And, and that's where it gets tough because kind of like in Fight Club, and I'm paraphrasing it here, but Tyler Durden said, when, when you're, when you lose everything, you're free to do anything. Mm -hmm. That's more or less what he said. Yeah. And that it, is the quote. Okay. Okay. Well then I guess I got it in one, but I wasn't sure, but it's true. When, when, when you lose everything and it doesn't mean you have to lose, you know, all your earthly possessions, even though it can be that, but when you, when you really don't give a fuck, then you are capable of doing anything you want. The question is, what do you want to do? And you have to own it, whatever it is. That whatever you do, if you succeed, that's on you. If you fuck it up, that's also on you. You, you can't blame society. You can't blame the women. You can't blame your boss. You can't blame your parents. 
you can't blame school. You can't blame society at that point. You, you have to own your own shit at that point and go, yep, I fucked up and it's okay. That's how we learn. That's, I mean, if there really is a definition of mastery of anything, how do you become a master? It's repetition. You got to do that shit over and over. It's like driving a car. The first time you drive a stick shift, you're going to grind gears. You're going to stall it. You're, you're going to roll backwards or do stupid shit. But after doing it over and over, after a while, you, you don't even think about shifting. You're doing it while you're talking on your phone or eating a hamburger or something. And, and same with like going after women. You know, you got to approach, you got to get out there. You got to, you got to get shot down. It, it's going to happen. It's a numbers game in that sense. Mm -hmm. You're, you're going to be told no, because Hey, women, you know, they have their preferences. Some women, Brad Pitt could walk up to them and they're going to shoot him down because they're into Denzel Washington, <laughs> you know, Brad Pitt, George Clooney, all these, you know, hunky dudes that, you know, that men think are kind of these sex symbols. These women are gonna be like, no, thanks. But Denzel Washington shows up. Yeah, they're going to be all over that. Uh, Denzel well, just happens to be the tallest of them. Just coincidence. Well, yeah, yeah, coincidence. But I mean, I, I did a video about that, about being a short guy. Dude, I'm 5'4". Okay. Really? You put me, I, yeah, you put me in a pair of like boots. I'm 5'5", five, five, maybe 5'6", five, depending on how much of a lift those boots have. I am not a tall dude. I never have been. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when I was a little bit younger, it was an issue for a while. But I realized with the women I was around, it was never an issue for them. And I've dated, well, my ex-wife was 5'8". Uh, there was a gal I dated way back in the day, crazy woman. <laughs> Man, that's a story there. We could talk about that one for an hour. But she was the same height as my dad, and my dad is 5'11". Damn. Because I, I remember taking her to meet my dad. And those two are having a conversation and they are eye to eye. You know, they are looking directly across at each other. And that's when I'm like, God damn, she is a tall bitch. You know, and I realized I was the one who had the problem because I, I was, it was awkward and uncomfortable to me that this woman's the same height as my dad, you know, because my mom was short. That's guess where I got that from. You know, I, hell, I was taller than my mom. My mom was like five, two. Okay. So I know where I got that from, but the women I've dated in the past, they, they're closer to my own height. They might be an inch or two taller, but they're usually about five, five or less. Uh, my ex-girlfriend was like, I think she was exactly my height. A um, couple other gals I dated when I was spinning plates before I decided to hook up with the 20, 20 year difference gal. Uh, th there was one of them. She seriously was like five foot in heels. In heels, she was fucking five foot. She was seriously like four eight. And it was great because she wasn't like a midget or anything. She was just short. And so seeing her in flats and it's like, oh my God, you're like literally you're you're the perfect height to put a beer on you. This is great. You know. Yeah, small girls are amazing. Oh, I love them, you know. But then again, I'm a short dude. But is it is, you know, are are there gonna be some women that are not gonna be interested because I'm not tall? Of course. Some women, yeah, they, they have a hard on for tall dudes and, it, but anyone under six foot is going to be too short for them. Mm -hmm. Some of those women are over six foot. I get it. They want a guy that's around their own height at least. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I've seen women who are, and how much is that? Because you don't use the, no, no, you use the metric system, right? We have the universal system. Uh, well, we we use we use feet and yards basically as well. Yeah, we and we use centimeters like all. Yeah, you normal, use the metric system. Yeah, yeah like we're, we're, we're the civilization. Oddball. Yeah, we're 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 not part of the civilization in that. No, no. European but I still get the idea when you talk meters because meters to me, I look at it and go, okay, a meter is roughly about a yard, which is three feet. So when when you start saying like, oh, the guys, you know, like two and a half meters. Well, okay. That's roughly like what about six, eight, something like that. He's a, a two meter tall guy. I mean, that's, that's fairly that's seven tall. foot, two yeah. meters, seven foot, yeah, two meter. Yeah. He's, he's basketball height. He, yeah. He's, a, he's NBA. Yeah. But I, yeah. I, I know women who are seven feet and their dating life is hell. Yeah. Because there's no guys that tall. No, yeah, 
They're very few. Exactly. So they're going to have to deal with the fact that they're going to be taller than their men. And especially you put them in a pair of heels with, you know, a three inch stiletto or something on them. Yeah. These women are now getting borderline onto eight feet. You know, they're giants. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, there's no guy that's that tall unless you are talking professional basketball players. Oh, yeah. And but They I are rare. I do feel for him. Like women yeah. are at Pergamus and things like that. And they want to look up to a man. But as a woman, when you're that tall, your dating life is fucked. Yeah. Even yeah. in Europe. Even in yeah. Europe. <laughs> well, and even here, it's like, yeah, there, there's not a lot of seven foot guys around here. They are rare, you know, but even, even six foot guys, you know, guys that are six, four, six, five, they're not super common. You know, there, there's quite a few. I know a lot of guys that are over six foot, but they are not the 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 average. The average height for a guy is about five nine, mm -hmm. and and so most guys fall in that average, or they're you know a couple of points one way or the other. And you know me, I'm obviously on the below average side because I I want to think here in the U.S. where if five nine is like right in the middle of the bell curve. I want to say about five, six is kind of the, the low end of average. And then when you get below that, now we're, we're kind of getting into almost outliers, you know, that it's like, okay, you're definitely below average in height. And it's like, yeah, but I, you know what? I make it work. It, I, I can't do anything about it. I mean, yeah, I could wear boots. So I could wear shoes with lifts or whatever in them. But at the end of the day, I'm going to still take my shoes off and she's going to be like, wow, you're short. And it's like, yeah, but you know what? You're not going to care about that when I'm in bed with you. Oh, no. And plus, wow. have you seen those guns? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Check that out, ladies. You know, exactly. You know, and, and so you can't control that. Like you can control your weight. Yeah. It's eat less, move more, eat cleaner, you know, lose the belly fat, lose, lose the weight. You can control that. Uh, your height, not so much. So let it go. And I've had plenty of success that, yeah, sometimes I had to work a little harder than guys who were taller, you know, guys that were average height or guys who were six foot, you know, they had it a little bit more on easy mode. And yeah, mm -hmm. initially it kind of pissed me off, but at the same time I looked at it and went, you know, that's okay because they might be kind of naturals, but they don't really know what they're doing where I've had to learn to be as good as these guys. That actually, in a lot of ways, makes me better because oh, I can yeah. get the same results they get, but I don't have the height advantage, you know? And so I've learned if I don't make my height a big deal, most women, the majority of them, aren't going to make it a big deal either. And so whether she's my height, shorter, taller, it kind of doesn't matter to me. I guess it mm -hmm. depends on what I'm looking for. If I want something a little more LTR-ish, then yeah, I prefer them to be a little closer to my own height or, or even shorter, ideally. If it's going to be, oh, fuck buddies or one night stand or a, a quick weekend or something, I could care less. She could be seven feet tall. I'm good with that. You know, it doesn't mm -hmm. bother me at all. So, but I've realized they usually don't care. If I don't make it an issue, neither do they. And so, true, guys, if you're short, let it go. You're, you're handicapping yourself when you don't need to. So, hmm, nice. Yeah. Uh, let me check the chat. Oh, by the way, for people listening, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I've put links to Robbie's channel in the chat as well. And please support this channel on Patreon because I am a poor European beggar. Socialism <laughs> has taken everything I love. And I am looking at my dog right now because I haven't had dinner yet. Yay, Europe. <laughs> But um, it's me asks, how old is Rob? I don't know. I am 47 years old. Huh. That's not too bad. Oh, no. No, nope. uh, but I am 47. Hmm. Secrets so, of the universe. Yeah. Well, that's another one. You know, th here, here's a fun one for you, Jack. Going back to a little bit of my history, how I was telling you about the prior me. Um. When I was younger, like back in my 20s, I, I dated women, obviously, that were around my age. And um, I also dated women who were a bit older. Now, we're not talking a decade or anything like that, but four or five years older, yeah, I, I would date women who were a bit older than me. Mm -hmm. And as I got older, 
Uh, that was another thing that I ended up doing besides going after fat chicks was dating women who were actually like two to three years older than me. And because again, that mentality of, you know, I, this is what I'm worth. And, and that's another one that was just like, oh, what was I doing to myself? Uh, my ex-wife is a year younger than me. And uh, it was really funny when I got divorced, besides that whole thing of I'd rather be dead than do this for another minute, was um, the idea that I had this mindset that if I was going to date again, I would have to date women like close to my own age, that younger women would not be interested. And by younger women, I am talking 20 years difference here. And it's so funny that, you know, I start spinning plates and two of the women I was seeing were closer to my age. They were still a bit younger, but they were only like three or four years younger than me. And when I got divorced, I was 42 at that time. So these women were like 40, 39, 38, stuff like that. And then lo and behold, in pops this 22 year old girl at the time and it's like whoa wow she's into me and you know initially i'm like i'm old enough to be her dad because i was i i was actually old enough to be her dad uh i met her parents her mother is my age her dad nice. is like three years older than me so it was always a hoot going to family events and whatnot, you know, and I'm the boyfriend. And yet, you know, me and mom and dad are talking about when we were back in junior high and high school. Oh, do you remember when this happened? Oh, yeah, I remember that. You know, we're peers. We're not, you know, like they're the parental figures. They're, they're my peers. So that was always fun. But I finally got to a point where I realized she was into me because of me. It, it wasn't some daddy issue. It wasn't some weird fetish. It wasn't because I have a fuck ton of money because I don't. I mean, I do okay by it for myself. I can pay my bills and there's always a little left over after the, you know, everything's taken care of. But I am not wealthy or rich by any means. You know, that's just, you know, I, I don't live that life of luxury or that lifestyle. I don't make that kind of money. And so it's, she's into me for me. Mm-hmm. And it was really fun because initially there was a lot of judgment from especially women, especially women close to my own age because, you know, oh, you're a cradle robber. You know, you're all but a pedophile because I'm dating someone who's young enough to be my daughter. And, and it would always blow them away when I'd introduce her because everyone would just assume it was my daughter given our age difference until I would, you know, be like, oh, yeah, this is my girlfriend. And, you know, or they would see me kiss her or give her a smack on the ass or squeeze her ass or do something like that. Mm -hmm. And she's enjoying it. And it would kind of, you know, make eyeballs pop out of skulls and mouths drop. Men would have the disapproving look in front of their wives or their girlfriends. They would kind of look at me like, wow, you, you, you dirty bastard. But if their wives or girlfriends weren't looking they would be giving me a wink and a thumbs up. Oh yes, I've had know? that. And and I've had that and I and I and I I knew a few guys that had a handle on their relationships where they weren't these simps, these betas, these cucks that they'd be like, you know, just openly in front of their own wives. They'd be like, "You need to step your game up, woman, you know, or I'm going to do what he's doing." <laughs> you know. And, and, or they'd look at me and be like, "Dude, you're a pimp." You know, right on, dude, because I was living their dream. And, you know, and I was because it's like, oh, man, you know, I, I'm doing exactly what it is I want to do. I, I don't want to date women my own age. They're too old for me. Oh, I you know, have the I, same thing. <laughs> well, and and it's a great world. Oh, shit, dude. Wow. Yeah, you're uh, yeah, I get it. But you know what? You're you and I are, are vying for the same women. If you're going for like 21, 22, 19. Yeah, you and I are vying for the same women. Oh, I'll take yeah. you on, old man. You know, hey, <laughs> you may have me in height. You may even have me in physicality because from what I did see of you, you look like you're a pretty buff dude. But I'll tell you what, I have experience. You haven't earned that one yet. True. That is true. <laughs> I, could learn, I could learn a lot from you. Yeah, you could. And no, I could but, learn a lot from you. Yeah, no, but it's true, by the way. I have two plates right now. One is 25 and one is 20. And I have to say that, the, oh, no, wait, she's 24. She's, okay. She will be 25 soon. Okay. And that's old for me. Wow. 
and I get it, you know, I get it, but yeah, it's the, the age groups. It's like, oh yeah, you and I would, if, if we went out and we're winging each other, if we were out sarging or going and doing like day game or something, dude, you and I would be vying for the same women. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but but, but, be a but fun thing is, I don't trust women my own age. Like when I read Preventive Medicine, that was the book to me that was the final nail in the coffin. <laughs> Speaking about nails in coffins. Yeah, there's the there's the authorities. Yeah, they found me. Fuck. Yeah, I was gonna say, dude. I, I guess they finally honed in. They they saw my AR and my shotgun, and then you know, because you are on a watch list now because yeah, we masculine geeks on a watch list. I so. mean, I am in Europe. You know, we're not that pro gun. That which is a shame. <laughs> yeah, it is. Like, it really gun, is. Gun, Gunpowder increases testosterone. Right. It, it is a way to, yeah, it's if you guys need TRT, uh, you need to, you know, just pick up a rifle and shoot that. Your testosterone will go up at least 10 points. Yeah. But about the women my own age, I just don't trust them because when I read preventive medicine, I, I just knew. I just knew it because Rolo states the, the epiphany phase. And then I finally got it. So that's why I don't want women my own age. I just knew it. Like every time I met one my own age, and she was like, oh, I went to college. The first thing that went on in my head was like, oh, that's bad. Yeah, she rode the cock carousel. Oh, yeah. that's. I didn't know how to describe it back then. But as soon as I read the words, I was like, yeah, that's it. Yep. Done. And like I mentioned yesterday, in Europe, it starts at 16. Oh, so wow. even even when you meet them at 19, 20, like chances are high, she already has a notch count of like what twenty five. Wow, yeah, that's see that to me that's that's the part that I still and maybe it is my age, you know, maybe it is my generation. Not that the women aren't promiscuous. Not that I, I I'm not stupid and I'm not naive. I know even my ex girlfriend that's twenty years younger than me. She either had a notch count that rivals mine at my age, mm. or she may even very well have a higher notch count than me. Mm -hmm. okay? It would not surprise me because of the promiscuity that that you know that sex is you know hey it's it, it's a badge of honor, you know go out and 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 you know find yourself and fuck a bunch of guys you know. So <laughs> she needs some it, space. Yeah, but it it still kind of boggles my mind, you know, especially, you know, like when I think of women that are closer to my age, that if they've got a higher notch count than me or something similar to me, that kind of makes sense that it's like, okay, yeah, I, I've, I've been on around the block. I've been with a bunch of women over the years. And so, well, of course, you know, and th th those women have probably done a lot of the same shit. Hell, I, I know a few of them, you know, from back in the day, but I'm, I'm thinking, these young gals, you know, that it's like, wow, you, you've been with more dudes than I've been with women and you're half my age. That's just crazy. But unless you're one of those, you know, using that, the, the Pareto principle, I guess the 80, 20%, the 80, 20 rule, mm -hmm. if you're not part of that 20% of guys, or I would even say nowadays, 10% of guys, you're not getting shit as far as guys go. You know what I mean? I, I you know, I, I think of who was it? It was someone on Twitter. I don't remember if it was a midlife game or, or God, it might've been Roosh somebody. And I don't remember where they got their numbers from. So I don't know how honest or accurate it is, but if it's true, they were talking about guys that by the time they're like in their late twenties, your age, maybe early thirties, that the average guy has had maybe one or two. What? That's it. Yeah. Maybe one or two. And the thing is, you know, uh, you've, you've talked to Red Pill Dad. Yeah. And to hear his story where, you know, he did his whole confessional on Twitter and I, you know, and I read it, you know, and I'm watching it and, and a lot of the things the guy went through, it's like, I can relate. I've been there. I've been there. But the one that blew me away was, you know, I was a virgin till I was 27 and I'm thinking, holy shit, you know, not me. I, I was way younger than that, but I was only 18 
when when I lost my virginity. Mm-hmm. And granted, you know, I, I I slept with a lot of women after I lost my virginity. But to hear that and to think that's if if the st- if the stats are right. And we're, we're hearing about, you know, guys are having less sex now than ever before because Rolo and a lot of them other guys have put that out there. You know, there's websites, articles that talk about that, but yet it's not the women who are necessarily having less sex. It's the men, it's the guys. They are becoming kind of those, the incel in a way. And it's like, holy shit, you know? So number one, I always thought my notch count was pretty low compared to guys I know that I know a lot of guys that, yeah, I, I'm nobody compared to them. You know, they're, they're way high up, way beyond my numbers. But then when I'm hearing, if that's true, that guys are having one to two, maybe five, you know, that if you're like in that category, you're kind of, Hey, okay. You've had some experience. And then I start thinking of my numbers and it's like, wow, I'm, I'm a fucking whore. You know, compared to these guys, if those numbers are actually accurate. Yeah. That it's like, holy shit, really, guys? Wow. I mean, my notch count isn't even that high, but it, it, it is, how do I say that? It's blinding to some in oh, yeah. comparison. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I would not be surprised. Your count is probably higher than mine. It, it would not surprise me. Uh, th- th- don't be don't be so so sure about that. Like I was a, I was more of a. Uh, how Are you a late say? starter? No, no, not necessarily. Like I was seventeen, but I was more of a um, a what? How serial do they call monogamist. It? Yes, that's the one. Serial monogamist. Uh, okay, so you had a lot of sex, but you were with one woman at a time over a period of a lot of years. Yeah, right? and I, I had oh, nine. Okay. I had nine before my last STR. So I had a couple of one night stands in between that. But then after she broke up, I just went on a spree. And I'm not that good in Tinder. I have a okay. lucky strike sometimes. But I'm now at eighteen. Plus, I ah. have. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll be honest about it. I have a notch count of 18. Dude, and... well, I'll be honest. You and I have the same notch count. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and I'm 20 years older than you, basically, yeah. you know. But, but no. again, marriage, LTRs. No. Uh, I, I actually probably have more one-night stands under my belt, at least hearing your story a little bit, because, yeah, I was a whore at one point. <laughs> no, but at <laughs> this point, at this point, I've got something going on. I've got two plates at once who know each other, nice. who like each other as well. Oh, so man. I've got the polygamous thing going on, not with the wo- ugly women who shares two betas. No, I got the, the other way around. No, you have true, you have a uh, polygyny, or, or I think is how it's pronounced. I'm just you a actually, badass. Yeah, well, <laughs> you have, uh, it, it, like, it's funny you mentioned polygamy, and people have some different ideas of what, true polygamy is like here in utah uh polygamy is an actual thing it's against the law uh but there are different sects of different faiths that actually practice it that inside that religious faith it is it is condoned it is encouraged and it is one man multiple wives and uh, mm, yeah. granted, it's not quite the 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 paradise that you'd think, because in a lot of ways, he is a beta. He is, you know, he's working his ass off to provide for all these women and all of the children that he has as well. You know, these are guys that have seven wives and have 35 kids. Okay. But they're all very their their communities are very close knit. So they take care of each other in a lot of ways. They own a lot of businesses. They have a lot of influence in the politics in their area. And so these guys in a lot of cases are actually pretty wealthy, uh, which is how they're able to pay for 35 kids and seven wives. Mm -hmm. Um, But the, the, what you're talking about, the, you know, the, the two beta guys and the one woman, it's like, Oh, that's polyamory, man. That's a whole nother beast. And, And, and we have that here too. I mean, that's everywhere. But I remember seeing uh, the, a place I used to hang out. They had a, a meetup, like from the meetup group. They had a polyamorous group show up. And oh my God, dude, I, I went just to see. I took the ex. Uh, this was back when we were still just dating and I was dating other women. And so I wanted to check it out to kind of see like, oh, I wonder if there's any women here I could add to my plates, you know, like what <laughs> you're doing. 
And so I brought her along with me. She knew what was going on. She knew I was dating other women. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I, you know, we show up and it was the, the blue haired, overweight, beta simps and, and just, just a room full of ugly. And it was just like, oh God, I no, I, I don't want to be any part of this. This, no, this is just bad. And it was, it was just, it was horrible. And that's like, that's not polygamy. That's polyamory mm-hmm. where if it's the guy that has multiple women, the harem effect, that's polygamy. So what you're doing, yeah, we could kind of call it polygamy. Yeah, I'm like, I got, I used Tate as one of my greatest examples. Yes. Yeah, well, you, you picked a good one to, to emulate or to, you know, I guess model yourself after. If you're going to emulate anyone's traits, his would be a good one to emulate. The, the extraordinary self-confidence, yeah. by God. Yeah, the irrational. <laughs> yeah, sorry about. I keep mixing these up. No, you, no you're right. You're right. But uh, but he's he's got irrational self confidence. No, the the uh, thing okay. was the thing was like I met my current first plate. So I met that one, but I was like, I I don't know. Like I I like your company and things like that. But I'm missing something. I just I'm missing something. And not that I necessarily want to replace you. But I just, I want more. So I just told her flat out, I want another one. And you're going to go on Tinder and we're going to fix this. And t- the first thing she said was like, okay, but she can't be ugly. And I was like, well, yeah, well, of course not. She can't be fat. So she was, she went along with it. And if she didn't went along with it, I would have told her right away, like, well, we're not in an official relationship. So I'm going to do whatever I want anyway. Yep. So comply or goodbye. Yep. No, that's, that's guys lie because we think if, if we aren't honest with women that they're going to get offended and they're going to leave and then we're going to be left, you know, masturbating. And if you have that mentality, that's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. Better to just be straight up because when I, when I was spinning plates, uh, I had several that, you know, as I was bringing them on, I was very upfront. Look, you know, I'm not exclusive. I am seeing other people. I don't expect you necessarily to be exclusive to me either. You can do whatever the hell you want, but I am going to do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And and if I'm not available, if you want to do something on a certain day and I've already made plans, know that that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm with other people. And if you, if you're okay with that, great, then we'll see where all of this goes. But if that bothers you and you don't want to do that, I understand, I get it, but this isn't going to work for me then. And we need to just call it a day and go our separate ways. And oh, yeah. there was a lot of them that were like, yeah, I can't do that. You know, I can't, I can't be with someone who's also being with other people. And it's like, I get it. I used to be that way. But I no, I this is something I've wanted to try out and it works very well for me. So this is what I'm going to do. And so some of them left, you know, and it's like, well, that's too bad. You could have been a lot of fun, but oh, well, you know, and so you move on. And some of them were totally fine. You know, some of them were like, oh, thank God. You know, I don't I don't want a clingy dude that's always around, you know, (laughs) and it's like, oh, yeah, trust me. No, I have a full schedule between two jobs and, you know, three different women. Uh, I'm a busy man. You know, I'm I'm not going to be if I'm available, you better take advantage of it, because otherwise I will have other plans. I'm not going to be sitting home alone unless I choose to. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, it's that ultimate sense of freedom. But I wanted to get back to Esther because yes. we've been mentioning sex now quite a lot. Of course, yes. women, we do that. But <laughs> she has in the chapter the female libido. And that's quite of a long piece, by the way. So hear me out. If he fails as a sex machine, he is, in his opinion, a total failure. Even if he is a brilliant scientist, he will never again be really happy. Women know this and take advantage. For example, A, she can pretend she is unaware of her husband's lack of virility and continue to praise him for his prowess, probably the most frequent method applied. B, she can make a man believe his sexual failure is a real handicap so that he considers himself lucky she stays with him. C, she can threaten to expose his sexual inadequacy inadequacy unless he does everything she wants since a man would rather be called a thief or a murderer than impotent he will bow his head to his fate and do what he is told 
and this is where a lot of guys get trapped in as well because we're men we have our uh how do i say that our hiccups like this happens to every guy whether you're not in the mood or you're eight uh you didn't eat enough or you didn't sleep enough whatever it can happen mm -hmm. but it can be used against you as well and i think that's the reason why we why we value it so much mm -hmm. well it's and, and and I know early when we first started this, uh, I'm glad you brought this little section up because that's what I was talking about where we, we as men, um, it's not just women, women just reinforce it. If anything, we are the ones that, you know, we have to be sexual dynamos. We have to be sex gods. We are the sex machine that, you know, we're here to please her, but it's not just about her. It's, it's our own ego validation when the truth is like you were just saying, there's a, hey, I've had times where it was, yeah, I I'm too tired or I'm sick or, uh, you know, whiskey dick is a thing. You get too fucking drunk. You're not getting it up, you know, at least at my age. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you can't perform. And because of that, I, I would say like the, where she mentioned that very first one, she can pretend she's unaware of his lack of virility and continue to praise him. That's usually been the response that I've had when that's happened in the past is that she's like, ah, it's no big deal. And, and maybe that was legit. Maybe she genuinely meant that. But in my head, you know, I'm devastating myself. I'm like, no, this, no, this doesn't happen. You know, I'm the guy who always gets it up, you know, but I learned to, to kind of let that go. And, and while a lot of guys, this is where, in a way, guys, you have to understand it happens. Um, you may be too drunk to fuck. Uh, I think Buck Cherry actually wrote a song that that's the title. It's <laughs> called Too Drunk. But that's exactly what it is, is too drunk to fuck. So you're going to be too high or you're going to be too drunk or you're going to be sick. You know, you've got a massive head cold or something going on. Or you're stressed out from work. You know, your boss just brought you in and sat you down and said one more and you're gone, dude. Or, you know, you're stressing because a major bill just came up and you're trying to figure out how am I going to make this work because I don't have enough money in the bank right now. You know, how am I going to make this float until payday? Or you're, you're madder than hell over whatever it is. And granted, anger sex can be good, but you can get too angry. I've been there where, yeah, you're so pissed off that you might as well just go fight somebody because your, your dick ain't going to get hard for a minute because you're too angry. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you can let, you know, quit beating yourself up for not being a performance machine, uh, number one, that's usually when all of a sudden, hey, things start working again. It's yeah. like, oh, wow, hey, you know, when, I, when I'm not dwelling on it, stressing about that I'm not getting it up, that, hey, it happens. Yeah, but she then all of a sudden that. you're getting it up. You know. She mentions that as well. Uh, it's the same page. Okay. Let me check. Uh, Psychological factors more than any other of his bodily functions. It's the next sentence. Yeah. Once he has yeah. begun to doubt his potency, he gradually finds himself in more and more difficulty. Yep. He fears of becoming useless to a woman increase because as a result of women's manipulation, he identifies his masculinity with his dependence on them. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and she's kind of spinning it towards the women and I get it because that's that's the whole theme of this book is women manipulating men. But we as guys, we are we are self-reinforcing where she talks about self-teaching. There's that section on that. Uh, we as guys where we're complicit in this, we're we're adding to it. And and that's one of them is that I need to be the stud that always performs and I can fuck. You know, I can come five times in one day and I can have marathon sex for six hours straight without Viagra or some other type of medication. It's like, guys, let it go. You know, um, some of the best sex I ever had started off with, I couldn't get it up because I was putting way too much pressure on myself. And instead of getting more stressed out about it, I actually kind of made jokes about it, not self depreciation, but just started like cracking jokes, just making her laugh. Mm -hmm. And, and then, then she's saying something that it kind of tickled my funny bone, even though women in general, aren't actually naturally funny. 
<laughs> they're just not. But she said something that actually was kind of funny. And so I'm starting to laugh. And then that it becomes this feedback loop where I'm laughing the pants right off of her. Mm-hmm. And the next thing I know, oh, all systems are go. I'm I'm good to go. And all it was was just out lighten the mood a little bit. Oh. You know, the, you don't have to be the performer. Just just enjoy yourself. And if, if you can't get it up for a minute, don't worry about it. Crack a few mm-hmm. jokes. It's a great pressure flip as well. Yes, absolutely. It's like, it's like well, he didn't like your lingerie as much as I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Things there like that. Go. Just put the that, pressure on there, her. That's a, yeah, that's a good – That I like that. That's no, a good, like, I'm like, gonna remember I, I had it once and I just did that. I pressure flipped it. I was like, oh, you know what? This is your fault. He does not approve. <laughs> yeah, I just looked at her and she did a great. I was like, yeah, you should uh, put more effort into it, young lady. She was like, yeah. ah, yeah, yeah. And then everything worked, and I just laughed my fucking ass off. <laughs> exactly, exactly. There you go. See, guys, there's there it is. Okay, you take the pressure off yourself. I mean, we we are the guys, men as a whole. We are. As a whole, we are the workhorses. We are we are the reason societies exist. We are the ones who built it. We are the ones who maintain it. We have the weight of the world on our shoulders, and 90% of it, in my opinion, is our own doing. We do it to ourselves, okay? Because when you're free, you can do whatever you want. You, you don't have to carry the load if you don't want to. You don't have to work the shitty job. You may have to work, but you don't have to do the shit jobs. You don't have to. You can do something else. Mm-hmm. Okay? Just like women can choose to work and they don't have to do the shitty jobs. Yeah, some man somewhere is going to have to do it, but it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be you. I, I don't mind doing certain shitty jobs. I take a certain satisfaction. Uh, number one for me, when I look at what I do where it is very physically demanding, I don't have to go to the gym as often because my job is the gym, basically. Oh, yeah. I've seen guys who work in construction. By God, they're more ripped than I am. Yeah, and, and they don't go to the gym. They, they work out every day for 12 hours. Yeah. And so there's a benefit of that. The other one to me is – Every the the last two industries I've been in, so a combined total now of about seventeen years, um, is a male dominated industry. There's not a lot of women, if any. So the politics, the Me Too's, the yeah, they've got the sexual harassment trainings and shit because that's just kind of the industry standard. Everybody's got to go through it, uh, and that's just for legal reasons for the company to protect themselves in the event something were to happen. But the truth is we're a bunch of dudes. There's, there's no women out on the front line. And so guys can talk all the shit they want and the other guys aren't getting offended by it. If anything, they're just dishing it right back. You know, that if, if people didn't know, they would think we were all a bunch of gay guys cause we're talking homosexual stuff about each other, you know, oh, what did you do? <laughs> oh, I was with him last night, you know, or someone goes, Hey, where's, you know, where's so-and-so. And my immediate response is, well, you, you got out of bed before he did. Why, why don't you tell me where he was? You know, it, it's, it's you, where it's guys busting each other's balls and it's, we don't have to worry about being offended, you know, that, Oh, got to watch what you say because these industries don't cater or, um, Wimpy dudes don't last. They don't stick around because of the demand of the work itself. Mm -hmm. You know, not saying that, you know, all the guys are in the greatest of shape. It's like, oh, no, there's we've got plenty of guys that are pretty soy that, you know, they they could lose 50 pounds plus, but they can take a hit as far as the 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 name calling the shit giving the the ball busting. They, They can roll with the best of them. Because they understand inherently if guys are, you know, pissing on each other, it's basically we like each other. Yeah. And, you know, and they understand that. And so they're not offended when, when we're calling each other names and we're making, you know, questioning each other's sexuality, that kind of thing. It's, it's, oh yeah, this guy likes me. It's when you never talk to the guy and you never say anything about the guy either way that, yeah, you probably are not too fond of that person. 
Yeah, like Jonathan from Modern Life Dating and I had that on Twitter like a while back. Like Jonathan was, um, you know, you've got good friends when they uh, when they bust your balls. And I, um, so I mentioned his ver fest, the one that looks like he killed a Wookiee. That yes. thing. I don't know if you've ever seen it. So that's the uh, first thing I mentioned. And it was like, uh, shut up, you shit muncher. And then Carl came in. Hey, guys, just here to say I really like you. I'm like, fuck. He hates us. Yep. Well, and I got in that thread because I said uh, I said to John, I said, hey, what's up, fuck face? Yeah, I yeah. remember that. Yeah, I was I was involved in that conversation. Exactly. That's that's what I mean. The, the guys that, you know, they like you when they'll call you names, they'll call you out. They'll, they'll bust your balls. They'll make fun of you. They'll tease you that, yeah, they, they like you. It's, it's when they don't talk to you or they don't really have anything positive or negative to say. They're just like, oh, yeah, I know him. He's, yeah, I know him. Yeah. And then Carl comes along. I like you guys so much. Yeah, no shit. He's playing the opposite card with that one. Oh, uh, yeah. He's probably and, got the snipers installed already. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Carl's awesome. I love Carl. Oh yeah, he is. He is. I, I've dealt with him a little bit on Twitter. I, you know, I've seen him on the Rule Zero. Uh, I, I know you've done the the gendernomics with him, which is fantastic. And and it's just he's. I I love Carl. Carl and Ryan. I mean, Rolo's Rolo may be the 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 godfather of the Red Pill, and I've dealt with Rolo quite a bit with Masculine Geek even before that. And I love Rolo, but. Ryan and Carl to me are like the guys that these are my wings, man. These, these are the guys I could go out and drink beer with and just get shit faced mm -hmm. and, and just have a good time. You'd be another one that it's like, Oh yeah, you and I, we could sit down and throw back a, a bunch and, and, and just call each other out and make fun and then still have each other's back at the end of it all. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, dude, if I, if I didn't think that about you, I wouldn't be talking to you on air right now. I, I'm, I am pretty selective about who I would want to be on air with because there, there's a lot of guys that I I've had people hit me up that, Hey, you know, I want to talk to you. And, and I'm kind of like, uh, I don't know if I want to deal with this guy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if we have enough in common or if we're on the same page enough that, do I really want to talk to this guy or is this going to be one of those awkward, weird, okay. Yeah. It's been 20 minutes and it feels like five hours, you know? Oh uh, yeah. We've I, already rather... been. Hmm? Oh shit. We've already been at this for like two hours already, huh? Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm okay. I'm, I, you know, I can go as long as you want to go. That's yeah, it. I, 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 I'm not that busy anyway. Oh, I mean, good. Yeah, I still have to. Re oh, I have to record a couple of more chapters from uh, Goldman's book, which I'm doing. You do? Is it Camera Game? No, it's uh, Go Forth. Oh, okay. I haven't read that one. I'll check oh yeah. Out. Oh oh, I have a confession to make. Like I ordered Camera Game, but it never arrived, and <laughs> wow. I I am. How do I put this? I don't want to contact the delivery company calling them up like, hey, my book about um, uh, getting women with a camera didn't arrive. Oh, <laughs> God. You please check that. Uh, <laughs> God, do I need to like buy one here and mail it to you? Do no, I need no, no, your no, address? no, no. I'll, I'll no. do it. You know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll air express it to you and have it registered mail where you have to sign for it to prove it. <laughs> Because it's a good book. It's 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 you know I mean, the SJWs on that one way made way more stink about it, which was the whole reason I even bought it. Is I wanted to know what's all the fuss here? Why are they all fucking losing their minds over this? So I bought it and I read it and and it's good. It really is. But all it is is it's game with a heavy slant on using a camera. Mm -hmm. But it's nothing. That if you have any game whatsoever, it's nothing you couldn't figure out how to do without the book. You know, there, there's, there was nothing there where I was like, oh my God, I, I would have never known that or thought about that because I happen to have a camera. And so reading it, it was like, oh yeah, I've done that. Or, oh, you know, oh, that, oh, that reminds me, I could do that. You know, it wasn't groundbreaking by any means. It, there was nothing there where it was like, oh shit, I, here's a nugget that I never had even considered. Mm -hmm. but it's still a good book. It, to me, it's very lighthearted, very playful. And so it's like, wow, people are losing their mind over this, man. There's, there's other material out there that is, I mean, the manipulated man blasts women way more than Goldman ever does. In fact, he treats women pretty damn good. 
Yeah, he does. Like, Go Forth, I believe, if I got the timeline right, Go Forth was written before Camera Game. Yeah. So Go Forth is about uh, how he discovered Camera Game. Okay. Okay. At least yeah. there's a there's a part in, or at least there's a part in chapter three, I believe, where it's like, hey, I've got my camera with me. Why not try this out? And then he describes how he got there. And then the rest is about going back to Awaka and finding himself. And it's actually a pretty decent read. Nice. Ah, well, like I said, I'm gonna have to check that out because yeah, where where he's talked about uh, some of his. Uh, mind-altering trips that he's gone on it's like i've done it I've, I've never done that particular one that he's talked about uh which is it again ayahuasca ayahuasca yeah i've no. not done that one but i have done other types of psychedelics in the past that uh maybe didn't quite get to the same experience that he's had with ayahuasca but they were some pretty cool experiences nonetheless that it's like, Oh yeah, that was, that was a good time. You know, uh, psilocybin mushrooms can, can definitely rock your world. If you, if you, if you know what you want to expect in a lot of ways, you have to have a certain mindset going into it. If you go in with fear, you're going to have a really bad trip to start. At least I did the, the mm -hmm. beginning of the trip was really bad because I was afraid. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, and when it started, I was like, Oh shit, I don't know how this is going to go. And it was just horrible in the beginning. But then it was like something in me was like, dude, you can change this. You, you just, just choose it to be good. That, I mean, it literally was that simple. And when I did, it became fantastic. It was like, Oh my God, if there is a God, I saw him, I touched him and it was because of the mushrooms. Nice. You know, so it was it was a good time and it, it definitely made me think of a lot of things differently. And so I, I can kind of get where he's coming from with the ayahuasca and from people I've talked to that have done it and have also done like psilocybin mushrooms. I guess the ayahuasca is even way more intense that it's 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 way bigger, broader, badder. You know, it's it's just bigger. And it's like, wow, OK. And mushrooms to me was like, whoa, that was fuck. That was heavy, man. I never so, did. Like I've had two drags of a joint in my entire eh, life. Eh. And that's it. I, I never was a drug guy because where I live, we, we've got a coffee shop. And in where I live, a coffee shop is not a literal coffee shop, but more right. the um, spy name for this is the store you can buy your drugs. Right. Yeah, it's a speakeasy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, – we we got guys walking around addicted to soft drugs. I mean, they are addicted to soft drugs, and they're just wasting their lives. Yeah, exactly. And well, and, and I had tried pot years and years ago, several times, and I never liked it. I mean, I I, I don't have anything against it per se. You know, not not even about like the lack of motivation or that you just kind of blow your life away. For me, it was just, I never liked the sensation of it, that it, that if I want to get high, I guess, I'll just drink. You know, it's like, I like that better because it, it, it's more of what I am I like. Getting high to me is just like, it's too, it's too much, where the mushrooms was a whole nother thing because I, I'd never done it. I didn't know what to expect. And I was hoping, I hope, I was like, God, I hope this isn't anything like weed. And it wasn't, it was something completely different, but it lasted a lot longer. It was like eight hours. And so if you were ever to do it, it's like, make sure you're not going to go drive around, make sure you're not going to go do weird shit, you know, stay, stay in a house, stay somewhere where you're kind of secure and safe in a lot of ways that you're not going to be bothered. And the, the people aren't going to be weirdos around you because they're going to do, they're going to have their own trips. Uh, but it's, it's worth it to me compared to like pot. They're two different things, but you know, at the same time, if it's not you, then it's like, yeah, don't do it. You know, it's, it's, it's not, you don't need, you're not missing out if you don't, I'll, I'll say mm. that. Ah, um, I like that. Yeah. You're not, you're not missing out. And, and that would be my, I guess my public school message to any of the kids <laughs> out there is guys, you know, I mean, you do you, and I'm not going to criticize if you want to do them. Great. Do them. If you don't, don't, but if you haven't and you've thought about doing it, I'll tell you right now, you're not you're not missing out on anything. Yeah, you grew up in the Reagan era, right? Yes. Reagan and the Bill Clinton era. Those were my two eras. 
like the war on drugs. No, oh, big time, big time. And that, and that actually had the reverse effect. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get rid of drugs. That made drugs even more popular. And so I've tried a bunch of different things over the years. And the mushrooms was the only one where I was like, I could do that again. That was kind of fun. The rest of them, it's like, eh, you know what? Nah, I, I nah. And that's where I can say, you know, to anyone watching, listening, it's like, guys, if you're, if you're considering it again, you, you do you, but if you choose not to, you're not missing anything. You're not missing out. So if, if that's just, it is, I just want to see what it's like. Eh, don't bother. You know, don't worry about it. Do, do something else, you know, go, go learn how to shoot guns. You'll get a bigger high out of that dropping targets with that thing. Oh yeah. You yeah. Know, go, go, go pick up women, you know, go do something else. You'll, yeah. you'll get a bigger rush. About, about picking up women. Yes. Um, bah, 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 bah. Right, topic. Because you and I have the same edition. <laughs> Yeah, we have page 154. And that's yeah, chapter yeah. Women's Liberation, I believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good yeah, yeah, yeah. Women's Liberation has failed. The story of the underprivileged woman was an invention. And against an invention, one cannot stage a rebellion. Once again, men are the mourners. In a country where men is exploited as unscrupulously by women as in the U.S., a movement that fights for yet more of women's rights is reactionary. And as long as the screaming for female equality does not stop, man will never get the idea that he is actually the victim. And that last sentence to me is, is it. It's as long as the screaming for female equality does not stop, man will never get the idea that he is actually the victim. Not that I like to play the victim card. I don't. But she's not wrong. No, it's uh, it's straight up Sol Alinsky rules for radicals. Yes, it is. Yeah, uh, Have you read that? Yes. Oh, my God. That, guys, you want an exercise in, in what the fuck. Read rules for radicals, man. That, that honestly, to me, that should be, especially in today's day and age, if guys want to unplug, if there's three books, in my opinion, that are kind of like, you must read these, that they are like scripture in a lot of ways. Rational Mail, the, all three of them, but in particular, in my opinion, the very first one. This book, The Manipulated Man and Rules for Radicals. Yep, because rules for radicals is how they did it. it it'll tell you how to weaponize. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man. No, it especially tells you how they weaponized. Yes. Like the long march through the institutions and things like that. I mean, by God. Like, do you know Sargon of a card? Yes. Because what you just mentioned about uh, Mayor telling the police to stand down, he did all kinds of videos on that. So it's not it's not a conspiracy theory. It's actually true. Right. But I mean, I guess it depends on, you know, who your listening audience is. You know, a lot of the normies and conformies will say it's a conspiracy theory, mm. you know, because they're too plugged in and, and watching, you know, reality television instead of actually waking up and looking at it and going, gee, you know, it, it is the mayor or the sheriff's office or whoever telling them stand down, you know, that there is an agenda here and that's why they can do what they do. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, I'm yeah. I watched reality television last week for the first time in five oh. years. Did, 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 you, did your IQ drop like five points? Well, it was amazing. Like they had this, this show on TLC called Curvy Bride Dresses and they were just fat. I was like, this is not curvy. How dare you lie to me, television? <laughs> yeah, their version of curvy and, and mine is two different things. Yeah. In fact, I would say it's funny you mentioned that. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because here's something I've noticed too, thinking of like, not necessarily like Tinder because Tinder doesn't even have that option to show it. But there's a lot of apps and, and dating sites out there because that is one of the options I'm doing at this point as well as, you know, like day game, I guess, you know, walking up and talking to women. But I like to have more options. So I'm on a couple dating apps and and wow, I, it, it, it's 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 just a wasteland for the most part. And, and I'm looking at the, you know, there's always the descriptor of the body that the, you know, women will say, you know, I'm thin, I'm fit, you know, I'm average, curvy, BBW, whatever. <laughs> and one thing I've learned, cause I I've done 
the the online thing. I mean, that's how I met my ex-wife. Uh, when I was back in the early aughts and mid aughts, that's almost what I did exclusively was you know, meeting them on MySpace, meeting them on Facebook, um, meeting them on a couple different websites that actually don't even exist anymore. Uh, never really got into the pay sites like Match or eHarmony or any of that stuff. Those I, I dabbled in them and, and got nothing out of them. So it's like, well, I'm not spending any money. What's the point? Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the things I've learned, and, and it hasn't changed. If anything, it's, it's probably gotten worse. And that's, my definition of average and women's definition of average do not add up. Okay. When a woman says she is average, I mean, maybe it really is society's definition of average. Maybe I'm fucked up because average to me is you're not fit, you know, so you're not tone. You're, you're not, you know, you, you don't necessarily like hit the gym. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you're not fat either. You're not overweight. You're, you're average. You know, you, you are height, weight proportionate where if you're fit, you're, you're fit. Okay. This is a girl that goes to the gym. She's got the athletic physique. She may or may not have definition. She may or may not have a six pack. Thin girls are just that they're skinny. Okay. Curvy girls are not fat. They have the, the, the hourglass figure. They, mm -hmm. they've got the Coke bottle. Okay. Yep. They are not fat where BBW or overweight or whatever. Yeah. Then now we're getting into tundra land here, you know? <laughs> uh, well, we are. Okay. But I'm, I'm seeing, and like I said, Jack, help me out here, man. Uh, well, I'm seeing these women that say they're average and I'm looking at them going, that's not average. That's fat. Well, because you're right. The thing is, uh, the population society in general has become, so, uh, how do I say, it? everything has become so easy that the average weight has gone up in yeah. the past, well, what did we say, 40 Two decades. Two yeah, decades. two decades, two decades. Let's keep it at two decades. So average these days is fat. Yeah. And fat these days is obese. Just like, yeah, it, it is. And thin these days is anorexic. But this is why I like Victoria's Secret. Not to wear, no worries. I'm not a cross -dresser. <laughs> But uh, they have their Victoria's Secret, a secret uh, catwalk yeah. show. And of course, it began. The social justice warriors were not represented. There weren't any fat models. And the CEO of Victoria's Secret came out and he just said, we don't care. Yes. Oh, mic drop. I was like, yes, yes, I love this man already. He was like, our audience is not interested in models with more weight than we would like to show. So no, it will not happen. And he just stood his ground. He didn't apologize. No, nothing. Nice. Huh? Love it. Yeah. No, that's someone that it now, you know what? You just made me a fan. Not that I wasn't a fan of, you know, their lingerie for the same reasons you've brought up, but, uh, that's just gave me incentive of that. You know, if I do decide at some point to be like, yeah, I need to go pick something up because I want to see, you know, hot, younger, uh, you know, younger, hotter, tighter in it that it's like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to buy from them because yeah, these guys, you know, they're, they're, they're standing with what I like as far as what the beauty standard should be. Yeah, and believe me, fat woman in lingerie won't make them more sexy. I mean, yeah. you can wear nothing and you will still be fat. Right. Yeah, you'll be fat and no one wants to see that. No, no, they don't. <laughs> like, we have these guys, like, Gillette did that as well, right? Yeah. Oh. Oh, the, that land whale. And that was literally a land whale. Yeah. Seriously, that blonde, gigantous, enormous tundra. No, she was huge. And yeah. Gillette is like, feel free. And I'm like, no, no, that should belong in a zoo, madam. Right. Yeah, that, that should not be let out in the light of day. You know, if anything, uh, maybe this is one area where the, uh, the religion of peace got it right. Uh, <laughs> that, that, if, uh, that if you're going to be out, out in public, you need to wear, you know, like a tent. Yes. No one should be able to see anything except your eyes. 
you know, beyond that, no one should see anything. Maybe, maybe, like I said, maybe the religion of peace, you know, got one right on that one. Well, especially think, if you're going to be a big girl, then it's like, yeah, you need to wear one of these things. Well, I think women like that should have their eyes covered as well, because as soon as they see food, they'll grab it. <laughs> well, yeah, there is that put blinders on them, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that would help them. That would actually yeah. help them like chain their hands. Yeah. Oh, but, hey, well, there, there's an idea. Like put the Hannibal Lecter cuff on their on their oh, mouth. Oh yeah, yeah, that face mask. There you go. Yeah, yeah. that's the one. <laughs> oh, mask. that. Thinking of that, going back to the manipulated man. Let me find it here, and I'll have you turn to the page so that you can read along in the book here. Where's oh, that? Nice. Uh, because this was another one that there was the one that I said about um, where women don't even consider men to be human beings. That was a big takeaway for me there because I've encountered that you've encountered it i'm sure on some level mm -hmm. but where is it at there is another one that goes kind of with it uh let's see where's it at it's not women's liberation it's not the emancipated female is it mm. no not not what i'm looking for it's not that i'll find it it'll just take me a minute here Ah, oh, that's okay. Like the final chapter, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Oh yeah, exactly. That, that there's one there. Mm. It's not what is love. This, this is such a, a great book. There's so many takeaways from it. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Guys, if you haven't picked up a copy of this, seriously, you, you need to. It's eye-opening, but be prepared to be pissed off. Yeah, like the, the part where she um, described oh, why, why go women ahead. go Go ahead and say it, but I found, I found what I was looking okay, for. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, the part where she describes why women go to college. Yeah, it's to find a man. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was brutal. Yeah, but it's, she's not wrong. <laughs> no, but these days she is. Like, Yeah, I, in a lot of ways. It is that whole emancipated woman that she talked about in that section. Mm -hmm. You know, there are actually some decent looking women. And then, of course, the ugly women where, yeah, they're, they're going to have to stand on their own. You know, yep. she did, you know, it, it's almost, even though I know she wrote that back in the day, it, it is almost like a, an afterword in a way like, I, oh, I need to add, you know, a, a final chapter almost where, hey, we need to update it for, you know, the, the almost the 2020s now. And women are doing their own careers and whatnot, but they still fall into those same categories that she mentions. You know, you've got the women oh, yes. that, yeah, they, they do the career as a starter thing, but really all they're doing is waiting to get married, find a man. Then you got the ugly women where, yeah, you're going to have to stand on your own because nobody's going to want that. And then you got her version of the emancipated woman, which to me is the majority of, of the women who choose that path, you know, that it is the, I do, you know, I am saving the world. I, it is my career, you know, but a lot of them still have a man behind them somewhere that is supporting them to some level. And, and they are destroying their own relationship because it is driving the man nuts because of hypergamy in that sense that she could always, well, I could do better than you because I make more than you already, you know? Yeah, but, and absolutely. I, and, and, and so to me, that is almost, that is almost like an, an afterward, you know? It's like, oh shit, she's talking about today again. Yeah. You know, but the fact, I'm too hokey. The thing is, you mentioned height doesn't matter that much. I mean, I found out that money doesn't matter that much. You know what? You're right. Um, I and you're right because you know, guys. Here's the thing, okay? We as men, we tend to sometimes get too binary. It's either this or it's that. When in fact, it's it's not. It's 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 a mix. It, it is a shade of gray versus black or white. Will a, will a guy who has money fare better with women than a guy who's dirt poor? In general, yeah, he will. In general, okay? A guy with game can do better than a man with money that has no game. Mm -hmm. A good-looking guy will fare better than a poor guy. He will fare better than a poor, ugly guy. 
but he may not necessarily fare better than a guy with game. Who's going to do the best out of all of them? Well, a guy who's got all of those things, a guy who's good looking, has money and has games going to do the best. Okay. But that doesn't mean if you don't have one or the other, that you're, you're going to be an incel and never have anything at all. It's I mean, like, I'm not tall and I do just fine. I'm not wealthy. I do just fine. I'm definitely not the best looking guy out there, but I know I'm not ugly by any standards, mm -hmm. but I am not super attractive. I do just fine, well, but I also have some game. And the, the best thing though, and that's why I'm very happy is that I found the red pill and learned game before I got money. Yeah. I'm very happy about it because I got the looks. That's not, a, I was never. No, you're a good looking dude. You're a good looking <laughs> dude. I'll say that. And then that's in a no homo way. But when I saw you, I was like, damn, Jack's actually a good looking guy. Yeah, <laughs> you're a good looking man. You are. You're good uh, I do dude. my best. I do my best. But I have my hair backwards because I just came out of the shower. You know, there, yeah. There's a trick for you, gents. I showered. <laughs> hey, there you go. Shower and brush your teeth, guys. Yeah, oh, I was all wet before we started. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but seriously, though, like, I, I never had trouble finding a girl who liked me and things like that. But I wasn't very much on finance. And I'm glad I wasn't. Because if I did, I would be spending way more on these bitches than necessary. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, if anything... You, especially in your position where, you, you know, by your own admission, you were always pretty decent with the women anyway. So it's not like, God, I need to learn game because I can't get laid. Well, more I needed to learn game because I kept losing them. <laughs> well, there's that. And and see, you and I are in the same boat there. That's that's kind of me. It's like, well, I, I can get them. And, and depending on what I want, you know, if, if I don't want to keep them, then I don't care if they slip away. But there's times when, yeah, I kind of want this one to stick around for a while. And so that's where, I mean, in, in, especially in my last relationship, that's where I backslid, got comfortable, started dropping the burden of performance, uh, got lazy and she decided to walk, you know, and, and by then I also knew, well, it's too fucking late, you know, chasing after her is just going to chase her away even faster. So I got to let her go. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, there was, there was things that she did that she could have done better, but I have to own my end of it too. And part of that was, well, I got complacent. I backslid. I was, you know, not doing things I should have been doing. I was not doing things I needed to be doing, not for her, but for me, I wasn't doing them. I, I was sitting on my ass basically. And, and just being like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm doing good. You know, I got my, my 27 year old girlfriend, you know, I'm good. And it's like, and then she basically got bored and was like, yeah, I need to go. And it's like, fuck. Well, that was me doing a backslide and it happens. It can happen. And sometimes guys, uh, the red pill is not going to stop that from happening. If women want to walk, they're going to walk. You can be the alpha Chad with the six pack abs, the six figures, six feet tall, six inches in the pants, six uh, months out of the relationship, uh, six figure salary and a 600 power horse horsepower car. Uh, there's the sixes that Rich Cooper's talked about. It all sounds very satanic when you put it like that. Well, but that's kind of how it is. You know, there, there's the women's checklist. You can hit every one of them. She can still decide to walk and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay. You can do everything right. She can still walk. That's why it's, it's, she's not yours. It's just your turn, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. It's boring. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She gets bored. She changes her mind. I know with my ex, I know part of it besides me backsliding is she started going into her epiphany phase Ooh. and she's now, cause when I first met her, it's, I don't want kids. I don't want them to ruin my body, uh, all this. And I'm like, cool. I don't want kids either. I'm good. Well, she started changing her mind. The, the last six months before everything completely fell apart, she was all of a sudden like, I think I want kids. And it's like, oh, and I knew it because it's like, oh, your biology is kicking in. It, it is the clock. Mm -hmm. You know, she's, she's not in danger of running out of time yet, but she's starting to get there. Mm -hmm. And so now the guy who's 20 years older than her, it becomes kind of a problem because, you know, realistically, you know, by the natural course of events, she's going to outlive me. 
well, she doesn't want to be, say, a 60-year-old woman, and I dropped dead at, say, 80, and now she's all alone. You know, granted, she may have our kids, but she's all alone and having to start over, and she's still got another 20-plus of life left to live where mine's all over. Yeah, didn't Delrock have a post about that? Like, um, because gr gray divorce is a thing yeah. right now. Yep. And uh, divorce around 50, 59, something yeah. like that. It, it's, men, it's people who've had their, their families, they stayed together for their families, but all they're now empty nesters. Yes. And realizing basically they have nothing in common anymore. So why the fuck be with this person? And men after gray divorce still find happiness with a new partner or their selves. They tend to be happier, but the women tend to be wrecks. Yep. They can't find anybody, nothing. Absolutely, because, you know, um, not to sound uh, bitter or, you know, like misogynistic or or anything that's like anti, you know, like fuck women. But what the, some of the things I've learned um, and, and you're going to see this as well, Jack, you, you've probably experienced some of it, but you'll experience it firsthand as you gain in age and, and mature and, and everything as you go along with your life. You're going to see this as well. And that is. Um, like Rolo talked about with his little graph, his SMV graph, and that women peak at around 22 and men peak at about 36, give or take, you know, that whole thing. Um, I, there is validity in that. I, I'm not going to say it's a hard number, but there is some validity in it. But women, once they usually hit a certain age, uh, and it is the talk of the wall, but once they get past a certain age, they literally, in most cases, become invisible. Guys just simply cease to see them. Mm -hmm. And and that is women that I've found that are typically over, you know, unless they've really taken really good care of themselves throughout the years, usually by 40, they are they are invisible. And a lot of these young women today that are, you know, morbidly obese and just just reckon themselves that it's like, oh God, you guys are going to be invisible before you hit 40. Some of you are invisible now. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm just noticing because I'm like, God, when I was your guys' age and we're talking, you know, 18 to 20, it's like, I remember, you know, I remember back all through my, uh, all my elementary school and junior high and high school before college, before university, all of my mandatory schooling, there were two obese people in my school and both of them actually had glandular problems. There, there was nothing they could do for it as far as eating right and exercising. They just put on weight and it was something to do that was glandular. Nobody else was fat. Everyone else was average, what I consider average, or they were thin. They were athletic because the kids got out. They played outdoors. Mm -hmm. They ate better than they eat today. And now, you know, everybody's like overweight and obese. And it's like, you guys, um, you're going to be invisible before you even hit your peak. You, you've already peaked out. And when you peaked out, you were 12. You know what I mean? Not that, yeah. you know, not from a sexual standpoint, but in a way, yeah, you were at your best when you were 12 before mm -hmm. you could even really, especially on a societal level, before you could even have sex. You, you've already burned that bridge and yet you're 21. This is, this is when you should be in your peak years as a woman. And you've already, you, you're already well on the way to the wall. Oh yeah, absolutely. You absolutely. Know? Like Wally wasn't that far from the truth. Yes. Oh my God. I was just talking with someone about that the other day, about the fatties that, that are sitting around in the chairs that move them around everywhere. It was Wally. Yes. Yeah, that's the one. Oh fuck. Yeah, dude, it is so getting that way. Oh, it reminds me. Here, here's I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a prediction that I made on my blog here a little while, Jack. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell it to you. So mark my words, you're gonna see this. Okay. Right now, at this point in time today, we are living longer than ever. And a lot of that is due to medicine, technology, uh, better environment. Uh, you know, the environment's not nearly as poisonous as it was, say, back in the industrial age when, you know, black smoke in the air everywhere. So we are living longer right now, but you're going to see that change. The, the people who are living longer right now, the majority of them are the baby boomers. They're my, my dad and my mom's generation. Mm -hmm. 
but that's because they grew up in a healthier environment as far as food and exercise went. My dad is in great shape for being almost 70. Okay. And the guy eats better. He eats better than I do most of the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's just, but that's how he was raised. Okay. Me, the, the Gen Xers, my generation, we're going to be 50, 50. Okay. Some of us are going to live longer than even some of the boomers. Uh, some of them, not so much. And that's because some of the Gen Xers uh, learned young to eat healthy and they're making the conscious choice to do so. Uh, this even goes beyond exercise. This is more just diet. The other half are fucked. And the millennial generation as a whole is fucked. That you're going to see that, that instead of living longer, they're going to have shorter lifespans. And that's because I'm seeing a lot of the millennial generation being these morbidly obese kids or young adults. And I used to work with a guy. Here's a true story for you, Jack. Worked with a guy. His name was Ray Mangum. Nice kid. Uh, he was about six foot and at his heaviest, I think he was around 400 pounds. Jesus. He, he was a big boy to begin with. Just big bone, big beast of a dude. Okay, but he was also morbidly obese. He, when I first met him, he was 25, 26. He just hired on at the armored car biz. And when I saw him, I thought, okay, there's a candidate for a heart attack by the time he's 40. Well, I was wrong. He died a week after his 30th birthday from a massive heart attack. Damn. Because of his obesity, he died at 30, died a virgin, had never had sex. Wow. So he never got to experience a woman's intimacy. As far as I know, he never even had a girlfriend. He'd gone on a date a couple of times, but he'd never actually been with a woman intimately, never really understood what, you know, what our concept of love is or even what a woman's concept of love. He'd never shared that with a woman, never had it and hmm. dropped dead a week after his birthday. Like seriously, it was like seven days died of a heart attack. And I, and that, that was the only surprise to me was, wow, he didn't even make it to 40, 30 years old, dead. Hmm. And you're going to see more of that because I'm seeing more and more people that are how he was, that they are that obese, that it's like, our bodies were not designed to handle that, guys. And if you're not dead at 30, okay, you might live, but you're not going to live to see 60. You just won't. Oh, no, absolutely you know? not. But it's, you it's don't not see a lot of morbidly obese people after 60. No, but it's not just the obesity. It's the, it's, it's the drug use as well and the alcohol use. It's oh, insane. Yeah. With yeah. millennials, it's insane. Oh yeah, they're, 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 they turned it up to 11. They decided YOLO is right and I'm going to just massively you know, party it up. And it's like, yeah, you guys are burning the candle at both ends between the, the, the drugs and alcohol and then the obesity and the junk food and everything. It's like, that's what I'm saying. Here's my prediction, Jack, that you're actually going to see instead of lifespans getting longer like they are right now, they're actually going to start getting shorter. Oh yeah, but I totally agree, Rob. And I think why that is... And well, I'm a millennial as well. I'm well, Aaron. Yeah. I'm Aaron's biggest nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I'm European and I'm a millennial. Oh God, yeah, you are his biggest nightmare. <laughs> uh, but I didn't have. I don't have debt, so that's good. Like I yeah. got out of college before the debt kicked in, okay. because I'm smart and I follow you guys. So that was good. All right. Well, then I, I'm going to propose to Aaron that as an honorary title, we make you a Gen Xer then. <laughs> honorary gen xer that we can put you in with our tribe yeah 1990 yeah exactly 1990 was 1990 like... okay so good god that oh that blows me away dude you were born the year i graduated high school and getting... <laughs> that's funny shit yeah you you literally could be my kid that's funny oh dear that is that is funny i love it but no I, i'm gonna have to talk to aaron we're gonna have to have a vote and and mm -hmm. see about you know inducting you as an honorary member of the gen xers yeah, so you're, but, you you got more shit going on than the, the typical millennial does. True, true, but the thing is, my generation, and again, back to Fight Club, we we didn't have a great war, we didn't have a great depression, we had everything, yep. and especially with men, 
we need to conquer something and i guess this is a blessing and a curse but and i think i already mentioned this online but i don't mind my mother died when i was 14 and she was a oh, vicious wow. alcoholic mm -hmm. but that uh, like surpassing that that was my challenge that was my inauguration to manhood and i had that but most of my generation did not suffer trauma and this yeah. sounds harsh but in these days good old-fashioned trauma isn't that bad oh no 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 the, the trauma of today isn't trauma in my book it's like no guys you you fell down and skinned your knee boohoo put a band-aid on it and suck it up you know it's like no no, yeah, it's it's unfortunate that you're right that that there is no rite of passage anymore in the sense of like yeah you go to war and take lives or watch a buddy get blown apart that's trauma um, a death in the family especially at a fairly young age can be a trauma that I I'll agree with that that's that's see like when when me and my ex girlfriend called it quits and uh, I had three things happen all back to back my ex girlfriend left. My mother died like a week later and then, uh, my car got stolen. Okay. Oh, which the, the car was my own fault because I was an idiot and left it running. Cause I was, you know, it's winter and it's cold type of thing. And so that one's totally on me. I, 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 I knew better, but you know, got the car back, but yeah, literally within like a week of each other, girlfriend of four years decides, I don't want to do this takes off and mom dies a week later. Okay. So mm -hmm. two major losses back to back. Um, is it trauma? Yeah, it is. Um, both of them. I mean, to me, the breakup was even more painful than my mother's death. Oh, a friend of mine said that as well. And he, he built, he put that, oh, sorry, he defended that with this. When somebody dies, they're gone. You, you can't have them back. But when somebody breaks up with you, they don't want to see you. Exactly. They, they reject you. Yep. You know they're alive, oh, yeah. but you also know that they just don't want you. Yep. And and so I would agree. I agree. And, and that's and that's what also makes it more painful. I mean, there's other factors in in mine in the sense that my mom had been diagnosed with cancer a couple years before. So we all knew that the odds of her surviving were not very good. So when the time finally showed up, it wasn't a surprise. You know, it was like, I mean, her her deterioration was very rapid at the end. You know, we were thinking, oh, she's got a couple more weeks. No, she ended up having like a day and that was it. Hmm. And so that was kind of fast where it was like, whoa, that was quick. But hey, at least she's not suffering. You know, that's over. Mm -hmm. But it is, it is exactly what you said. You know, that and, you know, not only did I know that the death was coming, but I haven't lived, you know, with my folks in, in a long ass time and, and I don't see them, you know, I didn't see them very often either. You know, I'm living my life doing my thing. So her death and where she was a little bit older, she was still young. She was only 65, almost 66. Yeah. She was like a week shy of her birthday of being 66. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty young given, you know, technology and the average woman's lifespan these days. But it wasn't nearly as bad as, yeah, and, and you nailed it with what you said. It is the fact that she's out there still walking around, still living her life, and she just doesn't want to see me and doesn't want to be in my life anymore. And that that was the the, the hardest part of it. And and it is traumatic, and that's, that's kind of where I realized where I had backslid in a lot of ways. You know, that here I thought, oh, yeah, you know, I got this figured out. And it's like, no, you didn't. Nope. In fact, guys, if you think you have it figured out, guess what? You don't. I'll, I'll tell you that right now, that that using the term unplugging, um, it, to use that terminology, dude, you're always unplugging. You're always unplugging. You're, you're, you, it, it, it is not an end state. It is not an end goal. It's not like, oh, okay, I unplugged. Um, you know, I'm, I'm good. You know, I don't, I don't have to worry anymore. It's like, no, 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 no. It's, it's not an end goal. You're, it's a constant state that you're constantly working on and you're, you gotta be vigilant basically. Cause when you start taking it easy is when you're going to backslide. Oh yeah, and, absolutely. And, and women will tolerate a certain amount of backsliding. They will. It's not like, Oh, the, the first little time you make a beta move or whatever that she's going to go out the door unless she barely knows you. But if you've got time in with her, 
she's going to forgive a lot of things and she's going to let a lot of shit go. You know, they will, because I, I've been there that there were points where it's like, oh yeah, that was pretty fucking beta. That was pretty, you know, I was being a chump there and, and it didn't phase her. You know, she was okay with it. It's not like, oh fuck, I lost frame. And now she's going to go and hypergamy. And now she's branch <laughs> swinging. No, no, no. She, she wanted to stick around until her epiphany phase started kicking in. And she started worrying about my impending death. Because I'd talk to her about it, you know, that maybe that was one of my first mistakes was talking about, you know, there's a real good chance that down the road, you're going to outlive me, you know, but that's reality. You know, I'm just looking at the reality of it. But the thing I did try to convince her of, which was a mistake and I shouldn't have bothered. And, and I knew it at the time, but I had to say it anyway, was this was right after she had left. And then my mom died as I had talked to her and I said, you know, my mom just died. And, you know, she was like, I am so sorry, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, you going to be okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'll be all right. But it just made me realize something. And she said, what was that? And I said, there are no guarantees. Okay. Everyone assumed that my mom would outlive my dad because he is older than her. Mm -hmm. And my dad smokes and my dad drinks occasionally. He is not the healthiest of individuals. Okay. My mom was in a lot of ways was healthier than him. And here she got struck down by cancer that was not hereditary, had nothing to do with her diet. You know, my mom did everything by the book, basically, mm. and she still got cancer. Yeah, that, those are the worst. Yeah, she, she did everything that she was supposed to do, and she still got hammered with cancer. And it's one of those that, guess what, guys? Shit happens. You know, it, it's not God punishing her for being a bad person, because she wasn't. She was a decent person. It's shit happens. Um, I know people I've had friends. Uh, I can think of one guy died right in front of me. Got, we were on a motorcycle ride and he forgot where he was pulled out into traffic and a car mowed him down at 55 miles an hour. Ooh. Watched it happen. It was, I had front row seats and it was his fault because he wasn't paying attention. Okay. Young guy. He was actually, uh, he's actually my age now. He, yeah, he was about four. He would, he would actually be probably about 48, 49 right now. Mm -hmm. And he's been dead for 10 years now. Okay. So he was about 38 at the time when it happened and nobody was planning on anyone dying that day. And yet here, well, here it happened. There are no guarantees. And that's what I try to explain to her. It's like, you're assuming that you're going to outlive me. You may not. We could end up having kids. We could have this long relationship. You're going to work or going to visit your family or doing something one day and get hit by a drunk driver and you're the one that's dead and I'm the one left raising the kids. And I am willing to take that risk. I was willing to do that. It's like, I'm will, I, knowing that, hey, there's no guarantees, I was willing to take that risk. Well, she didn't want to do it. You know, she, you know, she couldn't comprehend it. And I don't think you can until you've lost someone extremely close to you that you've had that type, like you where you're saying your mom died when you were 14, that you, you, you don't know what it's like until you've actually experienced it firsthand. Mm -hmm. you, you don't really understand that there are no safety nets there. You know, you, you know that on a, on a theoretical level that, ah, you only live once. There's no safety nets. But you don't really know that until someone extremely close to you. So your spouse, uh, your child, your parents, someone real close to you dies. And, and especially when it kind of comes out of nowhere where it's like, oh, you know, this guy just got mowed by a car. He was in the prime of his life. And because he forgot to look over his shoulder, he got nailed. Uh, my mom did everything right. She ate right. She lived her life by the book and bang, ovarian cancer. Welcome to, you know, welcome to your death sentence. Mm -hmm. There's no guarantee guys, which goes back to the manipulated man. You can live on the plantation. You can do everything for her benefit and, 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 and sacrifice everything that you want to do for her because that's what you've been told and trained and raised to do since you were a little boy. Your, your mother started it with you. You were raised at the knee of women. Uh, and you know, you went through school probably being taught by the majority of women. 
uh, college, if you go on to that, again, the majority of professors, they are women or they're indoctrinated men. And then you go on and find a girlfriend so that you can sit by her knee and she turns into your wife and you still sit by her knee. Guys, there's no guarantees. Oh, do no. What you do. do what you want to do. You know, there's no guarantees you're going to be here tomorrow. You, you may not. You know, you, 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 you know, Jack's 28, you know, and in theory, yeah, he's got a long life ahead of him. And I, and I foresee that you do, but there's no guarantees. You may not, Jack. Oh no, I might drop that any instance. This may be your last broadcast. You don't know. Yeah. So make the most of it guys. You know, it doesn't mean, you know, fuck everything and just wander off and do stupid shit, but do the things you want to do. Especially that. Especially to do heart strings. I don't. I don't know if you're big in the fitness community, but we, they, they used to have these twins on YouTube, and they always ended up their videos with "Do whatever the fuck you want to do," and they were so right when they said that because so many guys. And this is the reason why I didn't went to a birthday party yesterday. There were guys there who who actually use this phrasing oh we're such alpha males and alpha males do this and blah, blah but as soon as their bitch turns up as soon as their bitch is not happy they they crumble and i was like i do not want to be there because as soon as she is not satisfied these boys will do everything to make her happy and to me that is the farthest away from alpha you can get yeah i mean that's not- that's slavery that is no. slavery because you, most of your life, unless you can, unless you can get your income online, which I'm working very hard for, you'll be a slave to somebody else. I mean, I have a day job right now as well, and because of all of this and the book sales, book sales and things like that, I was able to cut off a couple of hours. But still, but still, and I mean, I work in customer service, and yet there's office politics in there oh yeah Mm -hmm. even there there's office politics because of some gamma male who doesn't like your face yep i mean now that we know all this try to make the best of it find something you're good at you didn't you don't even need to graduate in it just start doing it grab a camera make a thumbnail make an avatar go go anonymous if you don't want people to see you and start creating things yep Well, and the other thing I will add to that, um, since we're talking about kind of like income and jobs, um, unless, unless you are, I, I, I am not an entrepreneur. I'm not, I'm okay with the fact that I will, you know, I'll, I'll probably always work for somebody else. And I'm okay with that because the job to me is simply a means to an end. It is to finance uh, the lifestyle that I've become accustomed to. Mm-hmm. And and I've got enough put away that if I got fired or I got laid off or whatever, I have enough that I, I'm going to be okay for a while until I find something else. And there's always going to be something else. I, I've never not had a job unless I didn't want one. And so I'm not worried about that. But with all that being said, guys, um, especially if you're young and you're starting out, chances are at some point – in the beginning, at least, to have income, to, to have some kind of independence if you're wanting to, you know, get your own place, uh, whatever it may be, renting a flat or, you know, an apartment or getting buying a house, whatever you want to do, you're going to need money to do that. And a lot of times that means you're probably going to have to start by working for someone else, at least for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And my own opinion on that is this. Take a job that that it, it's going to be a shit job on some level. The pay is probably good because the work isn't. Pick a job that honestly, that, that men do. We're not talking gammas and soy boys. We're talking guys. Uh, the women aren't going to be there, so you're not going to have to worry about getting me too. The office politics aren't going to be a fraction of what it is when you've got men and women working together. Uh, working like customer service, like what you're talking about, Jack, I know the six layers of hell you're in, dude. I've been there. (laughs) I have been there. I used to work in a call center at one point, dude. I'll, I'll, I'll go do, I'll go sell drugs. I'll be a drug dealer. 
before I'll go work in a call center again. I'll, I'll go into black market, man. Seriously, I'll take my chances. I'll take my chances with prison over a call center because that was hell. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Like the office politics in there are insane. Oh, it's brutal. And you're in a call center for fuck's sake. Like if this was a law firm, I'd get it. But yeah. this? Yeah, it's a it's it's a call center. You're making shit wages in a shit environment with shitty people, and it's just pure shit. It's just nothing but one big mountain of shit that you have to eat, mm -hmm. and it's it's not worth it. But that's why I'm saying, guys, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Don't be afraid to sweat. Don't be afraid to 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 work your muscles. You know, if that means you're gonna go and dig trenches with a pickaxe and a shovel, but you're, dude, go do that. You're, you're not gonna do it for the rest of your life. You're doing it for like a summer or a year. And it's enough to get you financed to do the next thing, so that you you're just saying, you know what? But I can do this, and I'm not playing office politics. I'm not licking somebody's ass. I'm not kissing boots. You know, you, you don't have to play the politics game and worry about me too and sexual harassment and all this other corporate politic bullshit. It's like, go get a job where it's, it's what the guys do, you know, go, go pick up trash, you know, seriously, go yeah, climb the, power poles. Like, there, there is nothing dishonorable about that. Somebody has got to do it. Like picking up trash. I've heard it's actually hey, quite it's a really nice good. job. Yeah. Oh, like you got, have fun. Here, Oh yeah, guys here, at least, at least in Utah, I mean, I can't speak for all parts of the country, but the guys here, I used to work with some guys that did what I did. And then they, they went to trash removal. You know, they went to a waste management company because it paid more and they never even with the exception of going out and starting their truck in the morning or at the beginning of their shift. And then they clean it out at the end. That's like the dirty part of their days. They got to clean their truck out at the end. They got to get all the crap out. But the rest of their day, they sit in the cab of that truck all day and they drive around and they have the little joystick controls that move the claw arm that picks up the trash can and dumps it into the back of the truck. They don't have to lift a finger to do shit now. <laughs> and so they're not doing any kind of physical exertion. I exert myself more doing what I do than what they're doing now. And they get paid better than me because they're hauling around trash. Yeah, and, and it's nobody like, wants to do it. Yeah. And, and, and they get all the overtime they want. If they want it, they get paid very good money, good benefits, and they don't have any politics. Their, their office is their truck, so management's not micromanaging them and breathing down their neck all day. They don't have to play petty games. They, they go in, oh, your shift starts at this time. This is your area, so be here and get your truck ready. Go out and go do it. And you go out and you do your fucking job, and, and, and nobody bothers you. And that's not wait, wait. You had one more passage from the municipal. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, right? Let me find well, it. Was it was like a sentence, is what it was. Let me, God, I had it and then I lost it. Let me find it again here because it was good. Because it's, it's it's funny to me, is what it more was. Where was it at? Here it is. I found it. Page 114. 114. Yeah, this will be in women's vices. 114. And, and Jack, th this is the textbook definition of stay in your lane right here. Okay. You ready? Yeah. It's about the middle of, there's two paragraphs basically on page 114 because then there's like a sentence or so mm -hmm. that's the final beginning of the next paragraph. It's about midway in the second paragraph. The paragraph starts with most men will never admit the depth of their wife's stupidity. <laughs> yeah. This goes, it's a little further. It says women interfere and give opinions about everything. And since they are so stupid they don't realize that they are making fools of themselves. Okay. <laughs> that is so true. That is the definition of stay in your lane. Okay? Yes. When is. I read that, I, I was laughing hysterically and, and I'm surprised I didn't fuck up the highlighting when I highlighted that, that sentence because I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, what women in my life would that be a textbook definition? It's like, okay, that's my mother. You know, rest her, you know, rest in peace. But that was her. She she had opinions about everything and didn't know shit about the topic. And it literally was stay in your lane, mom. You don't even know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And she was too stupid to realize that she was making an ass of herself. Oh, that's just solipsism right there. Oh, it is. Well, and that was my ex-wife to a T. She was the same way. That it was just like, oh my God, both of you guys, no wonder I married my mother. Holy shit, you're both opinionated bitches. You know everything. And yet you don't know anything, but boy, you sure act like you do. Cause I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? Really? 
And me and my dad would used to call my mom the crazy lady as I'd call him up and be like, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. So how's the crazy lady? Oh, your mother? Yeah, she's all right. <laughs> you know, and, and that's what oh, she was. She, she's the crazy lady because she, she wouldn't, when she would say something like it was fact, it, it, I, I, there were times I would ask her, I'd be like, where did you get that from? Because it's like, where did you hear that? Because to me, that sounds totally like you just pulled that out of your ass. Like you just made that up on the spot. So where's your source? I, I have to know where you heard this so that I can understand this is why you, you believe this. You know, and, and, it, and there were times, you know, she'd be like, well, I saw it on this show. It's like, what show? And she'd never say what it was. You know, there was, there was never specifics. It was never, well, I saw it on the news. You know, it was this article or I saw this website. It was always, well, it was, you know, I was on the internet or it was, I saw this show. I saw it on the Simpsons. Yeah. You know, it was something like that where it's just this vague and it's like, so you're just making it up is what you're telling me that you, you don't know but you're too full of yourself to admit that you don't know. And so you're just going to make something up. And because I said it, therefore it's true. Oh, I've had that so many times. Oh God. Oh my God. Especially with coworkers. And like these wow. days, these days I'm not, I'm not holding back anymore. I'm just like, all right, that's an appeal to emotion and not a valid argument. That's an appeal to authority, not a valid argument. That's an yep. hominem, not a valid argument. And I just, I just keep saying those things. And then at a certain point, they stop trying. And I'm like, yeah, bitch, fuck off. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, that, that's it. You nailed it. Now, we were talking about transgenders. And I was like, yeah, you know what? You used to get hospitalized for that. Yeah, that was classified as a mental illness. Yeah, that used to be classified as a mental illness. But one of my female co-workers was like, well, you have two, two girlfriends and we're not complaining about that. And I just looked at her and I was like, Sexual what? preference is different than gender dysphoria. You know that, right? No, it's not. And I just... What does that have to do with anything? I oh just God. almost hit my <laughs> screen. Sir, I wanted to punch my screen out of anger for stupidity. Oh, God damn. And no, she, no, she just believed she was right. I'm oh, like, yeah. holy shit. These are two completely different things. How do you function and why? It, thanks. Right. It, it's yeah. It's like, what does, what does your dating two women have to do with transgender? They, they have nothing in common. No, nope. oh my God, that, that, that's well, you know, apples give you vitamin C, but you should really drink Drano. Yeah. What? what, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh my God. Oh, like, dude. Uh, like straw man doesn't yet even begin. To no describe. straw man. At least, you know, it, it's a straw man. It's like, okay. You know, we're, we're going after this person because I can't go after their argument, mm -hmm. you know? So I can kind of see that it, it's the, it's the, the old, you know, you get into a debate with someone and, and then, and when they finally go, well, well, fuck you, then, you know, <laughs> you've won because they've run out of anything else. That's all they can say is just, well, fuck you. Yeah. As soon as the at hominem comes, you know, yeah, you've won. Yeah, that's it. And, and that, that's it. You know, that's, that's how, you know, you've won. It's like, okay. But this is kind of the same thing. It's like, well, you, you date two women. What? Yeah, oh my I know. Dude, I my know. head's hurting from that. My, oh my god, I think I, I think my IQ just dropped. Oh, <laughs> I think we're gonna leave it at that, shouldn't we? we can almost, <laughs> <laughs> before oh we kill god. more brain cells. No shit. We, like, we've been doing this for like two, three hours almost. Three hours. Three hours, oh, yeah. Because we started a little bit after uh, four of my time, and it's now seven. Yeah, yeah you, you, you've got a hell of an episode here, buddy. Yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to cut it. I am not going to cut it. Uh, no, leave it. You should leave it. Let, let, let anyone who wants to watch it, because one, there's some good stuff in here. We've talked oh, about yeah. a lot of different things. There's a lot of good stuff uh, in this. And, and, and let them, you know, if anything, if they don't like it, let them suffer through it anyway. You know, for the ones that can't stand us for some reason, but they got to watch, then let them watch the whole three hours. Oh, yeah. That will be endless suffering. Yeah. Hey, Aaron runs his show three hours at a time sometimes, and, and I'll take breaks. I can't usually sit, you know, for three hours straight and watch it, mm -hmm. but I'll break it up and I'll keep coming back to it and get through the whole thing. So yeah. it's worth doing, dude. So where can the good people find you? I've already posted the links in uh, the chat. In the chat. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Guys, you can reach me at Rob Says, that's R-O-B-S-A-Y-S dot net. 
Uh, you can also find me on YouTube. The channel is Rob Says. That's the name of the channel. Uh, you can type it in the search or, you know, go to go to my website. Go to robsays.net. All the links to my social media, my blog posts, my podcasts, my video YouTube channels. All of that is available uh, on my website. So you can find me there. I put out at least one video a week. Uh, I put out a couple of blog posts a week. I always try to keep some kind of new content going on, and, and I rant about pretty much everything. So it, it it's angry Gen X shit, so bring it on. Oh, but that's always thank, good. Like, you Jack, used to have thanks a for having beard. me on. What's uh, that? You used to have a full beard. Yes, I did. I, I A couple weeks ago, uh, it, it was getting kind of unruly, and I was like, I had this moment where I was like, do I want to shave it down to what it is or do I want to just trim it, you know, trim the full beard back to manageable? And I literally, I was like, hey, either way. And so I, I literally flipped a coin. It was like, okay, heads, I shave it down to what it is. Tails, I, I just trim it up. Well, you can see how that outcome turned out. <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm fine because I, I used to have this look years and years ago. This is not new to me. It may be to other people. But to me, this is... I've had this and, and I've had people, uh, Aaron Clary, when I was with him, I had some people in the chat there say it. I've even had uh, a couple other people on my stuff say it. And, uh, TJ on masculine geek brought it up one day when he first saw me, he's like, dude, you look like Ted Nugent. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. Nice. So, but thanks for um, having me on Jack. I've enjoyed the chat. No, oh, by no the way, problem, people no. out there, uh, in a couple of weeks, beginning of August, I believe it's August 7th. Yeah. One week after my birthday, Jack is going to be on the masculine geek. And, and I'm looking forward. Oh, uh, we're looking forward to having you on Jack. It's going to be a good time. Some of those pictures of some of the stuff you've showed me, you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, I know they're going to enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, we're we're gonna want to talk about that kind of stuff. That's gonna. Yeah, be I, I'm gonna finish the uh, the, the big project? one right. Yeah. yeah, right after this. Nice. Yeah, you're you're gonna have to show me that, and like I said, you're gonna have to show pictures or something of that when you come onto the show because I've I've hinted around about your fascination with that particular subject to these guys because I'm I'm into it. I, I'm probably not into it as much as you are. I think you're probably into it more than I am. Mm -hmm. But I love the same subject that that we're hinting around out here, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh yeah, we're gonna be, that is gonna be part of the conversation when you come on the show. Oh yeah, no. but the, the best part about this is some of those are youth. Oh, yes, some of them came wow. from my youth, but I never took them down. Oh, so wow. one of these has been put together uh, for two thousand and two. So how long has that like, been? Two thousand two. That's seventeen years. Yeah, and wait, so like half your life. Yeah, one nice. of them is almost half my life wow. long built. So yeah, I, I never cool. took it apart. Dude, never. and you know what? Don't. Those are badass. Yeah, I know. So I'm I'm excited to, you know, like I said, that we're gonna have that conversation. You know what? Uh the boots, we're gonna need to talk about those too. Oh yes, Vince, I am so Vince is gonna have some shit to say about that because he, uh, I like what you showed me, but those until I actually get a pair, I don't have any in the styles that you were showing me. Mm -hmm. Vince actually has some that are very similar to what you showed me that you and him will definitely have something to talk about on that subject too. Cause he's got mm -hmm. a lot to say about some good boots. So you guys, uh, will, that'll be good. That's going to be awesome. Oh yes. I was so happy to make me another pair. Oh, that's yeah. That is awesome. Like I already ordered them. I got the track and trace everything. And then like an hour later, I received the message like, uh, dear Mr. Napier, we're sorry to inform you that our, uh, our stock just went out of a size seven. I was like, no, oh. no, not now. Size seven. What is that in us? Uh, like, like English is a size seven European is 41. So I believe yeah, 41 is not helping me there. Um, as I'm, I'm trying to think what that is because if it's what I think it is, dude, you have small feet. I do. So I you're do. like me because I have fucking small feet, dude. I wear like seriously, I wear like a size five, a size six in United States standards. Really? Yeah. Um, and that's where I'm trying to figure what what the you know like the European if 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 they're 
if it is actually the same or a nine. It, U.S. A size nine. is a nine. Oh, okay, yours is a nine then. Okay, so you actually have about average size feet. Then, yeah, nine. Nine's a decent size. Oh no, wait, this is women's size grind. God oh. damn it! Ah, yeah, fucking, that, that ain't oh, fucking feminine imperative. Yes. Women's size, no male, male. I have a dick. <laughs> well, it's it's wait. I actually have seven and a half. Which would be nine point seven inches. Okay, well, I, I'm gonna it, look it at feet size, answer. feet right. size, feet. Oh wait, I, just, I wanna say here we go, here we go, here we go. Got it, got it. Yours now we're talking, you said it was a 41 European, right? Yeah. And you said it was a a, a seven in UK? Yeah. Okay. At least for the boots. Okay, okay. Well, and the the chart I'm looking at here. Depending on, because they're saying a 41 European is actually an eight in the US and it's a six and a half in the UK. Okay. And if you're saying that it's a seven, then, then you're about an eight and a half in the United States standard. So your feet are a little bigger than mine, but not terribly much so. No, I know. I've got the, the, That's funny. the strange thing is my limbs. Yeah, it's it's very strange. Like my limbs aren't that big, but at least I can use two hands when I'm jerking off. So that's all. <laughs> You're well endowed, even though your feet are small. <laughs> yes. yes. It is a blessing and the curse at the same time. Yes. Yes. I get it. I get Why it. Why do you think I have two plates at once? All right. Well, that's going to take both of them to satisfy your needs. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right, Jack. Well, this I'm going to let been you fun. go then. Absolutely. We need to do this again down the road, brother. Yeah. Uh, people listening, uh, please like, comment, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon forward slash Jack Napier 368. I've also done the audiobooks of Gendernomics and Building Value written by Carl from Black Label Logic. You know the man, the ex KGB agent who's always on Rule Zero and he's on with Ryan on Red Morning. So, yeah, I did that. The links will be in the chat. The links to Rob's channel will be in the chat and tune in Friday. Yeah, Friday evening around midnight for Red Evening, where I'll be discussing Red Pill Matrixes. Maxims, sorry, Red Pill Maxims. Apologies. So,